Okay, guys. Clearly, this is very early. Um, typically, the live show starts at 2 p.m., and it's currently 1.13 p.m. So welcome, welcome to all the, all the early birds. The reason why I'm starting the stream so early today is I am playing around with the new stream settings here. On the last uh, live show, I wasn't super duper thrilled with uh, how some of the corals looked on stream. Now, I never really expect the, the corals that you see here, um, like the, at least that I see on my broadcasting software, to look like how I'm seeing them. Um, I don't expect like the, the, the broadcast end that you eventually see in YouTube to look quite that good. Excuse me. But it looked a little bit faded, um, and I think the, the, the primary reason for that is just the, the upload data rate that we're putting out. So not to get too technical, but long story short, we were limited to a large degree by our internet service provider on how much data we can send up. But then they increased it, so we started to play around with like you know more resolution, and higher frame rate. So this stream should be available at 1080p, full HD, 60 frames per second. But we weren't sending a whole lot more data than we were, pre than we were previously. So I think that the, the sacrifice that had to be made, unfortunately, was with the color that we were seeing with the corals. So real quick, um, I'm just like checking here. Are you guys able to, A, number one, hear me okay, and uh, number two, are you experiencing any kind of like stuttering, buffering issues in the stream itself? Because every now and again, I see little warning flags on my broadcast software as well as on the YouTube end that make me a little bit, a little concerned. Because it's cycling between, like, so for those of you that have never streamed live, you can see uh, this little display uh, on, on the YouTube end called stream status. And right now we're good. But then all of a sudden it'll be like, oh, bad. And if when it goes bad, like, that's kind of when you run into, like, the, the, the stuttering and skipping and buffering issues. So good, no stuttering. Obviously you can hear what I'm saying. The, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Okay, so Danny Days says there's a little bit of buffering, but everybody else is saying it's pretty good. Okay, good, good, good. Hope everybody is having an amazing weekend. I realize it's just started, but this is a good way to start it off, huh? So what's going on, what's going on? So this is to a quick roll call. Hello, Tim, hello, Matthew. Chris Harkins, Gabriel Montero, Passionate Reef, Danny Days. Did I already say Danny Days? I might have. D. Sonia, Hunstag. Hey, Than, any guests today? No. Uh, the, the guy that I had last week, um, he was not available. And to be perfectly honest, I wanted a week just with me. I wanted some me time. Just some me and you time, I guess. Uh, like I, I like having guests. It, it definitely makes the stream easier. But I mean, I, I, I see the commentary about how sometimes um, the, 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 the guest takes away from the true like reef related discussion. And I can see that because, um, you know, oftentimes like the, the corals just zooming by in the background and I'm like, I'm just talking about whatever with the guest. So I get that. Danny Days, thank you so much for the 199 pound donation. Appreciate it. Thanks for the super chat, man. <sighs> okay, let's see what else is going on. Yeah, and so uh, Rico, uh, he sometimes comes on these live shows, and I basically told him to stay home because uh, this is going to come out in a video that either that he either he's going to put out before me or I'm going to put out before him. But last weekend, uh, we went to Aquashella. And we were only able to stay on Saturday, and we had to leave right after the show Saturday because Sunday he was receiving a new show tank. Uh, if you don't remember Rico, I've done a, 
a thing on his aquarium. He does uh, YouTube as well. And he was taking down a really nice 300 gallon deep dimension and replacing it with a much larger custom aquarium. And he uh, needed a lot of help to put that in. And so I was over at his place doing that. He straight up broke his back. And so he really shouldn't be even on his feet, let alone coming over here and sitting in a chair, rapping with me. Can you get close to the mic? Let me see what I can do here. I'm gonna move my mic a little closer. Yeah, I can see my audio level's a little bit low. So hopefully you guys can hear all right. Okay. All good now, looks good, sounds good, sounds fine. Mine's 720p, so that was Mike Howard that, that threw that in there. So yeah, um, for years we've been broadcasting at 720p because I had really lame internet. But my internet did get better by itself, and so now we have literally four times, no, five times the, my original data rate. So I'm actually able to broadcast in, in higher definition and higher frame rate. So hopefully, Mike Howard, you'll eventually, if you're, I'm assuming you're not on a phone or something, um, you can see it at a full 1080p, 60 frames per second. Oh, okay. Just froze for a couple seconds, but only once. Yeah, I'm keeping an eye on it, because if, it, if it's really bad, if like if all of a sudden I'm seeing a whole bunch of dead stream, dead stream, dead stream, dead stream, I'll, I'll, do, I'll, just, I'll turn my stream off, turn it back on with a lower output setting, and we should be good. Okay, Kelly Kirby. Okay, you're the one that said something about the mic. Hopefully I'm a little bit closer now. You can hear a little bit better. Um, 40 B Nasty, having a couple beers. Good. I'm not drinking this time. This is just uh, this is just Pepsi, Pepsi Cherry, Pepsi Wild Cherry, with other natural flavors. Mm -hmm. So another thing that that helps me out when it comes to doing the whole live stream thing and checking on stream status is on my broadcast software it tells me if I'm dropping frames, and what that means is basically it never even that particular frame that 60 frames per second that frame never made it to the internet and so um, usually I start worrying if that number is in the hundreds approaching the thousands my worst stream ever I think I, we dropped like 3,000 frames so far we've dropped nine and I'm okay with that all right let's see Mark Nadier hello and you, you're gonna get an additional shout out for for being a patron through Patreon. Uh, Mighty Polyps, Ron T, Reef Grower Blake, Pepsi Man, not Coca-Cola, cheers. You know what, I almost never drink soft drinks and I went to one of these discount places, like Dollar General or something like that, and they got me. I only wanted one can, but they had like cases of 12 or 24. Like it was like three cases for like $9. And so I'm like, you got me. So I got, or I got three cases of this stuff and it's already packing on the pounds. All right, guys. Kelly Kirby, great shirt, thank you very much. It's, it's my Ted Baker. If you guys are into, into designer stuff. I used to be more into designer stuff. I've had this shirt like forever. Yep, I turned my TV up to 31. It's usually at 22 for volume. We're at 27 now and you move. Now when you move the mic, okay, it's a little closer. I mean, it should be eight inches from my face. First time watching your stream because it's 11.21 p.m. for me. Yeah, I mean, we usually start these things quite a bit later. Hmm. Let's see, Reefer's Life, hello, hello back. Reef Basin Aquatics is here. So does anybody actually actually have any questions or should I just start like going into my random monologue before the, the actual show, before the actual sale starts? I guess we're, we're already into the show. So if you guys haven't already seen, the last video I did was about this uh, coral, well, it's not a coral show. It's an aquatics show called Aquashella. 
Coralfish 12G, another YouTuber here that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. He and Sean Hill from Fritz put that on. And so I did a, like just like a 10 minute recap video with a couple of, a couple of interviews thrown in there with the show creators and some of the artists because George's concept for it, George being Coralfish 12G, his concept for it was to combine like a music and art festival with the aquatics trade show space. And I have to say, it was, it was pulled off very successfully. It had a big turnout. The art installations were pretty amazing. I actually liked the music. It was kind of, you know, it has that Coachella vibe going on the, the entire time. There's, there's a DJ and everything. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So yeah, if you, have, if you were able to attend Coachella, uh, Coachella Aquashella, hopefully you had a good time. And if you didn't, at least check out that video to give you an idea of what went on there because it was pretty different than just about every other show that I've ever been to. Um, I hear there's other good ones um, like the Aquatic Experience. That I've never been to that one. Um, I hear Interzoo is good, but Interzoo is like the entire pet trade and it's over in Germany. So it's a little bit of everything. I've never been to Interzoo. Okay. Yeah, I'll see. Making dinner plans here. I'm live, by the way, Mom. I'm broadcasting right now, Mom. <laughs> anyway, there, there might be dinner later. Okay. Let's get into some questions. Ron T, live rock versus dry rock. If you're asking me, I'm more of a dry rock person. Um, you're gonna get to a lot of, I guess a lot of opinionated perspectives when it comes to that. Uh, like Rico, like I mentioned, he is really, really, really big into live rock. I know that Mike Paletta is really into live rock. Sanjay, like those guys, they, they tend more towards live rock with the, with the idea that the flora and fauna from the live rock is pretty much kind of irreplaceable and the, just that biodiversity, it, the overwhelming benefits of that versus the risk of having pests. Now, another thing that I'm noticing is that a lot of dry rock sources, it's not just like, oh, this was just live rock that is now dead. I'm noticing that a lot of the, the, the dry rock um, that comes in, it's a little different. It's heavier and some people are actually having trouble growing stuff on it. So for example, you're not going to get the coralline coverage as much. So there's, not that that's necessarily the be all and end all, but you know, if that's something that people are looking for, sometimes folks have had trouble getting that to grow on certain types of dry rock. For my purposes, I'm much more worried about like the pest end of things, just being into aquaculture and whatnot. Over the, over the long term, the pest situation kind of goes away, but initially it could run rampant on your system for a good long time, especially if it's something really bad. So I, I'm hedging towards dry rock and, and also for, for my scale, obviously, getting that much live rock might not really be all that practical. Uh, G. Carol Fan, why didn't you sell at that show? Um, I can give you the, the, the quick and dirty with that. You kind of have to really specialize to sell at, sh at shows. I've done that for years, and it just doesn't really quite work out for me. Um, I've been to shows where I literally lost four figures just by attending. And I'm not about that because I could stay home and not lose four figures. I could have like watched Netflix. I could have binge watched, I don't know, Game of Thrones or whatever and made more money just by not going to a coral show and trying to sell. So it's, it's not something that we've done like in a very long time. Like I, you almost will never see me setting up as an exhibitor at a show. What happened to the girls who went to college with their camera? Any updates? Oh, that's like a million years ago. Um, I think they're back in the States. Um, 
I, I I've only talked to one of them kind of recently, like, oh, I forget, but I think she's a graduate student now at USC in California, or she's working at USC, one of the, one of the two. Nasty Nimu, hey, from the UK, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Scott Tupper, do you think that T5 LEDs are the best way to go? Um, I'm not really sure if there is a best way. If, if I was to have like a cost no object lighting system, it would probably be some combination of T5 and LED separately. So maybe like a, a really high end um, LED system, you know, take your pick, you know, the, the usual suspects, what Kessel, Ecotech, like whichever one you, you guys are into. And then the, the, T5 bulbs that I really like are going to be the ATI. Do you have any suggestions on how to get my bubble tip anemone to host clowns? Not really. Um, sometimes clowns are so, I guess, captive inbred these days that they've kind of like lost that behavioral trait. Um, I've seen people even take like a small like soup container, you know, those disposable soup containers that you get, I don't know, 30 ounces or whatever, put the anemone in there and put the clownfish in there and just to like, you know, say, hey, this, you, you can touch this, it's okay. Mark asks, my friend Rainin is sitting next to me and just asked if there are any edible coral. Uh, I don't think so. I think that'd be extraordinarily gross. Like, if you ever take coral out of water, they smell like the worst thing ever. I mean, they smell like, depending on which kind, it smells like some kind of metallic, rotting something. It's like this plasticky, metallic, dead thing. It's really gross. Hello from Indiana. Hello, white waves reefing in aquatics. Adrian Wayne. Thank you, from the UK. I'm sorry, I'm just going out of order on some of this stuff. Everybody's saying hi to the mom. Actually, the person that should be going to these shows is my mom because she wants to shop at these shows and she is like a professional coral acquisitions expert. Like, She's unbelievable at finding like the perfect coral for the perfect price. I have like no patience for it. I mean, you probably even just saw my videos. You probably saw, I don't know, out of like a 10 minute video, less than 60 seconds of actual, actual frag tanks. There were some nice corals there though, I won't lie. Than is not wearing a suit. I thought about it, uh, I, I considered it, but it's getting, it might get toasty here. Like you can never tell with Ohio weather. Um, Earlier today, it was slightly chilly. By this afternoon, later on, it might be hot. So I'm not going to risk a suit. I seen you holding the foam for Rico's tank. I would have done the same thing because that tank looked heavy. You have no idea the story behind that. Like, he, he'll, he'll tell you the same thing. But I risked my life to get that tank in there. Because it got, it got really squirrely during that move. You can eat green fuzzy rhodactus, but it's poisonous raw. It has to be prepared properly. That sounds nasty. I'm, I am an adventurous eater, too, and that sounds nasty. Matthew Carroll, I was at your place for the barbecue. I had a really good time. Thank you. Corals I got were doing great. Good. And yes, we're, we are planning on doing it next year. Um, I've got a couple of additional ideas uh, that I got inspired to do. No, Rico didn't do a lot of promotion, and I did zero promotion for that. So whoever managed to come, that was great. Uh, but with a little bit of promotion, we can have like a larger crowd. It might be a little bit better with some more people, that sort of thing. But I was just worried that, you know, 150 people would just descend on my house while we're just not ready. And I wasn't about all that. Hey, what's up, Lawson? Not a suit, but a nice shirt. Thank you. This is, this is the Vegas shirt, right? 
I heard taping a picture of a clown hosting an anemone to the tank can work. Sometimes I wonder like if, if fish care about stuff like that. I I can't imagine. I mean that wouldn't that wouldn't even work on my cat. Like if you if you wanted to point at, at points at something, your, the cat just stares at the tip of your finger. Doesn't care. <laughs> and and I'm wondering if like a clownfish might be a little bit more instinct driven than that. What do you recommend for lighting? placement and such for zoanthids, particularly purple monsters, in order to get the largest polyps. Large polyps, that's an interesting question. Because I've seen different people do different things to get the same result. Um, normally when I'm, we're talking about larger polyp, I, I think lower flow. I think you need to make sure that detritus stays off of the polyp and uh, heavier feeding. And zoanthids are not easy to feed, so you might have to work a little bit to get that accomplished. Mad River Reefs, you need to take Bitcoin. Bitcoin's transactional fees need to get to something realistic. Because the last time I checked, and, and I'm not like super into crypto that I'm like following it every day, but the last time I checked for a single transaction, I think it was like $26 in fees as a part of the, I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on the, on the term, on the blockchain. So that's why I don't accept Bitcoin. Otherwise I would. I, I, I'm actually very pro cryptocurrency. Just watch Rico's vid. Tough move. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The so if you can imagine moving a five hundred and something gallon tank down a staircase. Yeah, that's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Cause the thing must weigh like either a thousand to fifteen hundred pounds. It was insane. Mostly reefs. Picked up uh, some corals. Are doing great. Barbecue was great. Thank you. Frederick Nietzsche. I dialed down my flow in my acro-dominated mixed reef and I'm noticing better polyp extension. Yeah, generally lower flow equals better polyp extension. You want to avoid the situation where you're not getting enough flow and everything starts dying. Um, put some rum in that Pepsi. No. Lawson, the enabler. Mark Nattier, the $1.99 super chat. Thanks, Mark. What are super chats? <laughs> it is like the, the tip jar of the chat. So if you guys are like deadly serious about getting your question answered and need an answer and I'm not noticing it, that is one good way to get my attention. If I've missed it long enough, you pay. <laughs> and, and it's like, oh, oh hey, look, that, that'll do it. So thanks very, very much, Mark. I appreciate it. So if you, so for the folks that um, I, I don't, know, I don't even know if it's available in every country, but there's like right at the very bottom, there's like a little dollar sign thing integrated into the chat interface, and that's where you can give not just me but anybody's live stream a little bit of a tip for their for their time and effort. Okay, I'm setting up a 56 gallon tank with two AquaClear 110s. Good or bad idea? Like a reef tank? Because if it's a reef tank, I'm not loving that idea. Uh, so AquaClears are freshwater power filters and they're really good at turning ammonia into nitrate. And you don't really want to be stuck with a whole bunch of nitrate in a reef aquarium that'll kind of interfere, especially like high nitrate levels, um, will interfere with coral growth and it'll eventually cause many of them to die. I would stick with something a lot more basic, just a protein skimmer and some good flow in there. Now you could use the AquaClear just for flow. Like if you just didn't have like the big sponge in there, this, this big sponge filter. Vutran, hello from San Diego. Do you ever get ick in your system? Do you believe Ginger can cure it. Have not heard of ginger doing that. Recently tried it and it works. Two days, got rid of it. Um, we used garlic to, 
mixed bag of success with that. But for us, the, the real easy solution is just shrimp. Um, the skunk cleaner ship does a really good job. How do you get rid of turf algae? Unfortunately, you, we do it like manually. So either we take out the entire rock and just let it cook outside for a month, or we physically get in there with like a metal tool and scrape it out. Coinbase is free transactions. Coinbase is free? No, it's not. I, I've paid fees to Coinbase. Is it like, I don't know. I've, 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 Mad River East, I will look into it, but Okay. Really? Coinbase to Coinbase is free? Hmm. But then I have to keep money in Coinbase until they just vanish one day with all with all of it. <laughs> yeah, cuz it's like I I have my own like hardware wallet. Like, I don't keep my stuff on exchanges. Uh, let's see, what is the difference? So Sean Davies is asking, good afternoon. What's the difference, if any, for our hobby purposes between cyanobacteria and dinoflagellates? Uh, not a lot. Basically, they're just indicators of crappy water quality. Something to, to, to try to remedy. Because either one, not looking the best for the stuff in your tank that you actually want to keep. Is there a video for the barbecue? Uh, so Lawson, I didn't shoot any video, but there's a couple of videos out there. We had a pretty decent, um, we had a pretty decent YouTube contingent there, and they were all shooting stuff. Will you do shots for Super Chat? No. <laughs> Lawson's like one of my best friends. Total enabler. And actually, we, we go on vacations a lot. Like, if you, if you see some of like the title travels themed vacations, a lot of times I'm either with Lawson or his wife. Um, and we're, we're all going to be going to Vietnam this winter. So, many of you that go to these shows know of a guy named Asian Nutty or Frost. And I think he renamed his company Frost Corals. Regardless, he's, he's always at these, at these shows. He goes to like 50 a year. And he's Vietnamese, and I, I saw him at Aquashell, and I was like, hey, um, I'm going to Vietnam for a vacation. He's just was like, why? Why are you going there? You're going to get pickpocketed and robbed. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, great. Got that to look forward to. He's like, whatever you do, don't dress like that. <laughs> so I might not take my nice camera there, just in case. Uh, let's see, what do you recommend for aquascaping a five gallon dwarf seahorse tank? I don't think you have a lot of volume to work with. So whatever your seahorses can grab onto. Even like fake Gorgonians and stuff, I would consider that. Miguel Maya, Than, did you ever resolve the temp issue? Um, I'm still having problems with no AC. Never thought it would have affected my tank so much. Yeah, so temperature is one of the big issues here. We get better at it every year. I mean, it's not so much of an issue these days, but it's this thing. And finally, I got to the super chat. So D Sonia, four ninety nine. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. I appreciate it. And that, guys, is how you do super chats. They sell uh, fans on Amazon that clip to the tank will help a few degrees. True. Also, those, those uh, fans that clip to the tank also like to fall into the tank, so be careful of that. You don't want those things falling into the tank. So secure it uh, in a secondary way also. Reefaholic, all the way from Texas, welcome. Is algae gonna benefit from temperature problems? It can. Uh, sometimes when we have like a weird temperature fluctuation, it's followed by um, algae going a little nuts. Manier McNamee, loving the shirt. Thank you. I'm like, I'm like screaming inside for attention, I guess. No, but I, I like this shirt a lot. I usually don't wear uh, a lot of like the, the more festive shirts that I 
that I used to wear, I guess. I've gone like super ultra basic. So like my all time favorite shirt is a white button down shirt. Super boring, but it's like if it's tailored perfectly, I'm all about it. Have you ever heard of Vibrant Reef Aquarium Cleaner? I have not. I have not. You should meet Frost in Vietnam. <laughs> he's not, he's not, he's from Akron. <laughs> and I don't think he has any interest in going back to Vietnam, it seems. He, he does visit, like, he does visit, but he didn't sound like he, he wanted to go back. Mark Natty, thanks again for another $1.99. When are you going to meet the Chasing Coral people? That's interesting. I mean, I did a, I did an, a video review of that Netflix documentary. Um, yeah, that's a good question. You know, we don't like run in the same circles at all. Like the, I know the one guy was part of the aquarium trade at one point, um, but like I literally have never come across them in any industry type setting. I never came across them in any public aquarium setting. Not that I, I'm, I'm hugely like versed in that crowd, but you know, in my experiences with, just with Shed recently, like there was no talk about chasing coral. I mean, like if, if anything, I was like the coral guy at that event. I mean, because obviously Shed does a number of different, you know, things with like whales and dolphins and freshwater and stuff. And so like of everybody there, I was probably the coral guy. So yeah, there was no, yeah, just nothing on my radar. But hopefully they continue with, with, all, with all their work, because I, I did like that. Um, Boomy Adam, KSI or Logan Paul. Can I hope a meteor crashes into both of them? Seriously. I, I'm super not into drama YouTube. And I'm super not into Logan Paul. But I think that's only because he's more local here. I think if I, if I lived in the UK, I think KSI would bother me more. So there's that. Why do brown gorgs love being blasted with light? Are they shallow water? Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. Like whenever I'm in the Caribbean, um, I always see all types of these, you know, like obviously the Caribbean Gorgonians. And there's tons of light wherever they are. But also, they're everywhere. So like you go deeper, they're still there. Go real shallow, they're still there. I've seen them in like six inches of water. Like it's, like it's nothing. I think they're strictly academic. Maybe, maybe, except I don't even think that any of them are affiliated with a university. I think they're just like, I don't know what they are. Any suggestions for moon coral sea goniastria? Okay. Um, not a lot different than anything that I would recommend for like a favia or favites. It's, and it's one of those LPS that's like very middle of the road for just about everything. They could benefit from feeding, watch out for sweeper tentacles, things of that sort. <laughs> Frederick Nietzsche, uh, and I'm so sorry if I'm butchering your name, Frederick. Uh, Y'all got any more of those super chats? <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks for, thank you so much for the five euros. Got to do a little, little neck itch. That's a good reference. Dan is like the nature boy Ric Flair. He's custom made from head to toe. <laughs> Woo! I love I, I love Ric Flair. I mean, I'm 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 guessing that the guy, in his real personal life, not the best dude ever, but I absolutely dig the nature boy because I grew up with like that type of old school wrestling. Like I was, you know, I was into NWA when NWA was a wrestling thing before the rap group. You know. I'm into the rap group too. We're both instances of NWA I'm about, and I'm all about the nature boy. Scott from Roscoe's Reef. Good afternoon, Than and Alm. Welcome, Scott. Charles Harris. I never had a salt and plan to set up a tank soon. Is that a good beginner? Uh. I'm missing the second half of that question, I think. Um, best advice I can give you right now is do as much research as you can. Like, however much time you spend will pay itself back exponentially. 
Hi, Mary. I love your videos and advice. Awesome from the UK. Thank you. Vu Tran, are you attending MACNA in Vegas? Unfortunately, I'm not. I was really on the fence. A lot of people wanted me to go to MACNA. Um, but I think that the, the Vietnam vacation that fell into my lap totally obliterated my travel budget for the year. So um, follow-up question, Sean Davies. When is the next dive trip? Um, it's, it might be in Vietnam. So we're going to be going from um, Ho Chi Minh City down the Mekong River on like a, a cruise boat thing, which I think is just like a regular boat <laughs> that might have like a place for me to crash. And it's going to take me to this island resort called and uh, excuse my Vietnamese pronunciation. I haven't even heard anybody speak Vietnamese, but it's, it sounds like it'd be like Phu Koc. Um, it's a, yeah, it's like an island off the coast of Vietnam. And they have a dive center there, sort of there. Like my resort is about 40 minute drive away from the dive center. So I might make the little expedition to go diving there. Okay. Janine, okay, I, I'm sorry, I was trying to like figure out how to pronounce your name. Janine H, thank you for the super chat. Hi, Than. I have a rock with an invasive zoa colony. It also has a bubble tip and a nice rock nem dug in deep. Any advice on how to get the nems off? So that's always kind of like risky if, if you're already dealing with zoas. Obviously, you, um, the, the worry there is agitating the the zoanthids and risking any type of palytoxin poisoning. Um, what I would look for are some like clay cutting tools or wood carving tools, like some stainless steel things with kind of like a rounded, almost like a, like a, a imagine like taking a stainless steel spoon and shrinking it down 10 times. And that's kind of that, that shape that you're looking for. And you can reach in there and slowly like bother the foot of the anemone. Thank you. So it's this sort of thing. I don't know if you can kind of, uh, other way, I'm not a makeup chick, see? I don't know how to do this. But it's kind of like this sort of thing. You know, you want like a rounded paddle type shape. The other side of this is like a more like sharper, scrapier side. But they're basically like uh, clay working tools, wood carving tool, that sort of thing, okay? You might want to play with something like that. Uh, I did a, a video on reef hacks, and one of the items, uh, you can check out like an Amazon affiliate link to the one that I got. You can check that out. Thank you, Ben. <clears throat> Dive or not, there is no try. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, at the very least, I will, I will snorkel as far as for whatever that does, right? Like for the, for the people that like dive, snorkeling is like, I can do that in my bathtub. Like why do I care about that? Jonathan Ingram, I'll second the research. I did loads and found out I needed to know a lot more before I started mine. February this year, it's hard work. I still do research. I still do a lot of research. Uh, Than, what place would you love to dive that you've never gone to before? I want to dive in the Red Sea. And there are all kinds of logistical problems with doing that. Um, I think that if you, if you look at where the Red Sea, all the countries that border it, I mean, there's like, actually, I, I'm sure somebody's going to correct me in chat. But like, it's basically like Saudi Arabia, like Sudan, Egypt, and like that, that type of, of region. And so um, I've heard that Egypt has cleaned up substantially. And I think like, I, I, again, sorry, my Arabic is not the greatest, but I think it's like Sheikh El Sharma is like one of the cities that's known for diving in the Red Sea. I would like to tr give that a try. But actually what, what scared me off from even attempting it, because one time I was like looking at travel to Egypt to a resort there, and it was literally uh, like, $300 and all inclusive everything is like $300. I'm thinking the only reason why it would be that cheap is because it is like absolutely terrifyingly scary there politically and, and functionally on the ground. So I'm like, I don't want to, to risk that to save some money. Um, 
Yeah, and, and maybe Jordan might be bordering on the Red Sea, but that's like the Red Sea would be my number one place to go diving. And second would probably be the Seychelles, but I just want to go to the Seychelles. I don't even know if they have good reefs. Israel, sort of, but Israel is not. They, they, there's like a separate body of water. I forget what that's called. It's a Gulf of something. And Israel has like a little tiny tip of that, but I'm not sure if that's technically all still the Red Sea. What's a good sand sifter for my 75 gallon tank? Preferably one that won't eat all the microphone in the sand bed. So if you don't mind covering your tank, the best, um, the best one I've found is a diamond, like an orange spot diamond goby, orange spot goby. But the problem is they jump out a lot. And so I would definitely, you know, consider having some sort of covering on your tank. We hope to dive in the Red Sea next year from Pergarda. Not sure where that is, Nasty Nemo. I have, I'll have to, yeah, like I'm, I'm basically American. We don't do geography that well. I couldn't tell you where Maryland was. <laughs> Love your videos, dab on them. <laughs> uh, I'm a little old. I'm a little be old. I'm a little old to be dabbing on anybody at this point. And by the way, we're five minutes from the start of the show, from the actual sale, I should say. We've been we've been well into the show, but I will take a short little break, and we'll we'll hop into it. Wow, I actually got to watch it live instead of a rerun. How's it going? Love your vids. Thank you so much. Glad you could make it. Fried corals, your videos rock. Thank you. Appreciate it. I need to get more. I need to get more subs. Well, you know what? I'm not even complaining about that. I need to get more videos done. That's really what it is. I want double. I want double my views. I need double the videos. This whole uh, business next door with the, with the new building, it is taking, it's soaking up a monumental amount of time. And patience. And so sometimes, like when I'm when I'm like completely exhausted of patience, I have nothing left to to edit video with. Ah, it's in Egypt. Okay, Diamondback Gobi. Okay. I was diving the Red Sea the other week, actually. It was in South Egypt, really beautiful. However, the water was over 86. That'll do it. Oh, yeah, no, the guy's name was Dabster. Yep. Yeah, he can dab on him. He, he can dab on him for me. Okay, I'm going to use the bathroom real quick. I will be right back. Oh, sorry about that. Dropped my mic. Okay, I am back, kids. Hopefully in this time my stream just didn't die. Okay. Hi, Than and everyone else. Nice shirt. Thank you, Marine TV. 
okay, let's see, what did I miss in the, in the chat? Are clams sensitive to nitrates and phosphates? Not really sure. They hate it here, so they're sensitive to something. But I thought that they were actually supposed to help reduce both. I could be wrong. I'm not a clam expert. I li literally kill them all here. Any luck with getting electric to the new building? Funny you mentioned that mostly, Reefs. There is electric to the new building. And there were some complications. It's, it's, I'd say that the, the building is half done as far as electricity goes. But um, at one point, we had a couple of outlets, three or four, that were wired at 240 volt rather than 110 or whatever they're supposed to be. So whenever other contractors were plugging stuff in, they would be getting their equipment fried. So that happened. Yeah, like the electricians just wired it up wrong. 240. And so like we have some GFCIs that are just like cooking hot. Total fire hazard. Blew out a couple motors here and there on, on stuff that we were running, like exhaust fans. Yeah, that happened. But yeah, you could, now that, since we got that fixed, we can plug stuff in now. Danny Days. One to nine, $1.99 per shot of Pepsi. <laughs> it's not quite the same thing, is it? But no, I won't be drinking today. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't even know. Like, once we start having to do stuff for, for money, they'd be getting weird. I don't, I don't know if we want to go down that road. It's like, take off your shirt for money. No, we're not doing this. This is going to set a bad precedent. Sell them corals already. We can. It is now 2 o'clock. So, we've, we've looked at this forever. Let's go to number 2. But what I'll do is I will explain all the, all the goodies here as to how this whole show works, okay? Taking off, mom and dad. Okay, text me the secret location of dinner. Thank you. At six? All right, well, try to get done by six. Okay, is it in Montrose or in Cleveland? Okay. That sounds like Cleveland. Okay, that got blurry. <laughs> All right, so for those that have not done one of these live shows before, and you are here in the US, unfortunately we do not send stuff overseas, here are the general rules. You can go to titlegardens.com slash live, and that'll take you to the live sale page. You will see this video embedded, shipping, and so you'll see like the, all the, the numbered items down below. So this guy in the background is coral number two, as you can see here. Coral number two. These are some Sakura Zoas. If you'd like it, toss it into your shopping cart, and you have to check out in order to actually get it. So oftentimes what people do is they place multiple orders, but to avoid getting charged the flat shipping rate each time, select there's a multiple orders option when you're checking out when it comes to the shipping method. So just do that. If you happen to pay for more instances of shipping, don't worry about it. If you eventually go over 250, because after, um, after $250 shipping is free, it's on us, you can um, stop worrying, because we will give you a refund. Real quick, the Patreon crowd. So for those that are not doing Super Chats already and would like to support me on Patreon, uh, these guys have donated at the $5 level, so they get a shout-out on this live show. So thank you, Mark, who's also in chat and also super chatting. So thanks again, Mark. Appreciate it. Christopher Curry, Alan Jackson, Trevor, Trevor Overbeck, Kevin Cortez, Samuel Jolson, Phil Quisimano, Robert Moore, Ryan Kern, and Dave Davis. Thank you all. And I'll give you guys another shout-out a little later. Okay. Let's go. So the guy in the camera today is Ben. Everyone say hi to Ben. <laughs> I 
Hi, Than. Is it safe to introduce a baby Niger trigger into a basic LPS tank? I haven't had any real trouble with them in a reef tank. Uh, that's not to say that they might not pick something off that you like, whether it be an invert, perhaps a shrimp, perhaps a snail that you like. I've never really seen them bother other fish or corals. I guess they're on the, on the, the mildly aggressive end of the spectrum, but usually not a big deal. And again, we are cooking at a high data rate here. So for those that have missed like the earlier part of this discussion, um, we're trying something different as far as like the broadcast goes to hopefully improve the color rendition. I wasn't perfectly happy with last, uh, the, the coloration of the last show. Not really, no. Okay. So, yeah, long story short, this might be, assuming that we don't have any like weird hiccups or anything like that with the stream, might be our best looking one. Hopefully. We'll see. I'll, I'll check after the fact. I guess they never all, they never really look bad. But there's varying degrees of okay that they've, they, that they've ever looked, and I'm trying to always improve that. Because if you were actually to see these, these corals live here, they look a lot nicer than what they look like on YouTube even. It's funny, like, now that like, the, the actual live show started, everyone went like radio silent on chat. It's funny. Oh, we're live. I think we're live. Yeah. Like, nobody said anything. So, like, he, he had just chat just like, boom, dead end. Oh, here we go. Rico's Aquarium says hello. So, hello, Rico. Take care of your back. I, to I told him a, a real brief story about how you may have, like, you may have done yourself in on that, on, the, on this last move here. So Rico is uh, putting in a, a really big aquarium. So if you're interested in that whole pro process, he's putting out like a video practically every day on the subject. You can check that out. I'll be doing a, like a short 10 minute video when, when I finally have time to edit it. Um, yeah, it was an adventure. We all went to get rum and Cokes. <laughs> and everybody else is like, yep, you're live, you're live, everything's good. <laughs> Mostly reefs, give Sean some love for me, Than. That's a that's a barbecue inside joke. Sean will be all right. He's not he's not in the ground hidden somewhere. We're counting the beans and trying to decide if we want to toss it in our cart. I know the feeling. So this new building, as exciting as it is, it is not the most free project I've ever done. And so I, I find myself counting beans quite a bit. So all your super chats, all the Patreon donations, and every coral you purchase helps me eat tonight. <laughs> so like, we're, we're, we're there, guys. <laughs> that, that, that's, the, that's the funding level we're, we're talking about now. Oh yeah, it's like I saw you in that video. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, let's let's get Rico a wrench here. Add moderator. Rico's aquariums. All right. So hello to everybody. Pandora B. Who else did I miss? Probably a whole bunch of people. Podunk Reef. So what's the convo? Oh, we're just all over the place. People were asking some questions earlier. I was telling some a little bit of a story about about Aquashella, a little bit of a story about Rico's new aquarium, complaining about my about my new build, which has nothing to do with an actual aquarium yet. That'll be a completely separate rant, I'm sure. Fan, that's a hell of a camera you used at Rico's. Wow, thank you. It is. You're actually looking at it some more. That's what's pointed at all these corals right now. 
Same camera. Hey, Sean, you're number one, man. <laughs> yeah. How fast do uh, Pali Grandis propagate? It depends, like most things in this hobby. I've had them reproduce very quickly now. I've also had them not do anything for months. So once they get growing, it's actually a pretty fast process. Is that a parrot I can hear? It's some kind of bird. I have no idea. Not a parrot, though. Dubsy dabs or give me a wrench. No. <laughs> number 10 is not opening. OK, number 10. You know what? That's a shame, because that, that coral is probably very nice. It was a Fiji hypercolor. Uh, yeah, that's a shame. Moving on, number 11. Uh, Than, do you accept Bitcoin? We were talking about Bitcoin a little earlier. I don't because at the time that I was looking at it, there were like really high transaction fees, like over $20. But somebody was saying how you can do it through exchanges for free now, through like Coinbase or something. And I have a Coinbase account. I'll look back into it. So Sean, I, I, I am pro crypto, even though like, it's probably going down in value right now. I don't really care. I, I support the technology platform. Generally, I'm not into like BitConnect or anything like that, but you know, like <laughs> the more mainstream, less fraudy ones. I'll look into it. Uh, Gabriel Montero, is this all what you see is what you get? Yes. You will receive exactly these corals. Yeah. That stands for, so Dubsy, Dabster, which that's what you see is what you get. Do you ever overnight time lapse your corals? Um, no, I don't. I would consider doing, you know what? What's weird is as much as I know about photography and videography, I don't know how to do good time lapse with an actual stills camera. I've never actually done one. It's super easy. I know children do it, but I've never personally done it because once I got my video camera, I literally stopped picking up my other camera. So all the photography that you're seeing, it's really in the providence of Ben. Ben does, does, does all the still stuff. I taught him everything I know, and he's become a very good photographer, so I've completely outsourced that activity to him. Um, but yeah, that would be like a, a, a cool thing to to, to mess around with. Like I can't do that with a video camera because it'd be just like churning ginormous files the whole time and I don't want that. You don't need that for a long time lapse. <sighs> Frag corals, will your location ever be a store to the public can shop in? Uh, don't think so. We're actually trending the other direction. It might be like closed to the public so yeah, I don't, I don't see it ever being like a, an open retail setup. Jake Lee, hey Than, is direct flow for acros better or indirect using an MP10 on a 32 cube? Um, you, like acros can handle quite a bit of current, but you always want to be careful that you're not blowing the flesh off of these things. Sinochase 2012. Image is awesome. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. We, we try to do something a little different, a little extra, to try to, to up the visual game here. So this, right now, is probably the best we can offer unless we went really crazy. And we don't really have the bandwidth for really crazy just yet. I have to sneeze. This is bad. So Pandora B, where can we purchase these corals? Real quick, I'll go over the rules again. So you go to titlegardens.com slash live, assuming you're in the US. We don't ship outside of the US. There you will see the entire listing of corals. You'll just see the number though. So for example, this guy was number 15, right? So if you like the green agave zoas, it's number 15. And you just check out with it like a regular item. You can mix and match from other items on the site or these things. Uh, whatever it is, 
in order to actually get it, you have to fully check out. Just having it in your shopping cart doesn't do anything. You have to fully check out. And if you're going to be placing multiple orders throughout the show, that's fine. Just select local pickup slash live sale slash add to an order. It's, it's basically the, the zero shipping option. So you're not paying multiple instances of shipping. Anyway, continuing on. Yes, and, I, and I'll also just put it into chat real quick here. It's titlegardens.com slash live. And you can also read, um, you can also read all the things I basically just said, but in greater detail there. Sam, do you have any equipment that you need, that you, I'm assuming, don't need and you want to donate? Um, we have a lot of junk that one day we should probably do a, some, oh wait, hold on. I'm sorry. That was a pink plasma. I'm sorry. I, I screwed up. So going back a step, that is a pink plasma. Sorry for the confusion. I was like doing other stuff. And then now we go to number 17, which are gobstoppers. Okay. Sorry about that. Any thoughts on lava rock for biofiltration? don't love the idea we have like we have one giant rock here that's lava rock it's never really grown any coralline on it it's kind of like a cyanomagnet uh, where is local pickup at it is at this facility in northeast ohio in akron ohio so pandora real quick since you're new are you in the u.s because sometimes people from overseas like try to, to purchase and it's like they can't. <laughs> it's like, yeah, because we can't ship it to you. Aqua Splendor, hello everyone. Hello, Aqua. Rico's Aquariums, heading to my local LFS for more supplies. Yeah, get used to that. Got a new tank? <laughs> That'll happen. So when the screen goes black like this, don't freak out. He's just moving the camera, and we cap the lens so that all the motion doesn't get, yeah, doesn't get all thrown in your face. Tech Gear Talk, hey, what is up, my man? Tech Gear Talk was on the stream last week. We were, we were talking about a lot of, a lot of tech stuff. <laughs> so people were like, when's he going to talk about corals? We, we're here talking about phones and cameras and stuff. But hello, welcome. And thanks. Yeah, I was before the live show, he and I were talking again about tech stuff. And I was like lamenting. I was like, boy, it's like I really hope this, uh, the, this data rate situation with the high frame rate, all this stuff looks better. Yeah, the video seems to look better than before. Great. I'm glad. Mostly reefs. Be sure to follow Tidal Gardens and Rico's Reef Tank on Instagram. Thank you. And check out Tech Gear Talk on Instagram too. If you're if if you're interested in tech, he's the guy. Admit it, the black screen is just to put the focus on you. Not entirely false. Not entirely false. So I am going to point this out. There is a microaptasia on number nineteen here. It is in an aquarium with a copper band. So that thing is going to last minutes more. Tim Cuthbert, it was great to meet you yesterday. You have a great operation. Thank you, Tim. Glad you like it. I hope you're, hopefully your corals are doing well. Number 20. Yeah, and uh, Rico stopped over yesterday as well, and so he also got to meet Tim Cuthbert. So uh, I was talking to Rico just before the show, and he was, we were joking about how 
Rico, just as, as a personality, likes to go to a lot of shows and likes to get into a lot of different conversations. Whereas I am way more conservative when it comes to way more conservative when it comes to any kind of business conversations or dealings. Way more. And that's like the last thing anyway, regardless. So I, I was saying how like my default stance on anything is no. His default stance is Yes, or I'll, uh, let, let's try it. And I'm like the exact opposite. It's like no until you really twist my arm. And so he, we were talking about like how like my nickname is just going to be Dr. No. <laughs> like some Bond villain. And I'm, I am super okay with that. I'm really okay with that. Daniel. Wow, those are amazing prices for beautiful zoas. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think they're fair. Like the, the, like the pricing is slightly less than what we would typically sell on our website. So uh, like the live sales are good to save just a little bit of money there. But the, the other nice thing is you get to see the actual item, uh, the actual coral. You can see that it's a, either healthy, it could be closed, it could have like you know, something wrong with it. At least you can see the what you see is what you get version of it because for the number of corals that we go through, it would take a tremendous amount of effort to get it all up on the website as a what you see is what you get. So that's part of the savings. It's like if you're saving us time by, by participating in this whole thing, you get to save a little bit of money too. And you get your questions answered. You know, you can hang out, you can talk to other people. They might have a, a completely different perspective. Um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of, of people out there have very different uh, strategies on how to be successful in this hobby than I do. Okay, Ken. Hi, Than. Are you Asian? Yes, I am. <laughs> and and Ben just died. Good job. You killed Ben. Oh boy. Mark, will you try one yes for him per quarter or per month? He deserves one yes every once in a while. Actually, funny you mention that. My uh, initial response to George for Aquashella was probably not. It doesn't look like it's going to work out. And he went kind of behind the scenes, talked to Rico, and said, we'd really like you to come, but if you could also somehow get Than to come too. That would be nice. And so Rico's like, I get it, I'll try. No guarantees, obviously, because <laughs> you know what the situation is. But it, they, uh, they, they pulled some strings, they made it happen. This is number 25? Yes. Okay. okay. Jesse Wang, good morning from California. Welcome, Jesse. Do you have any guests for next month live stream? Love to see a new face. Uh, I do not. I, actually, I have not thought for one nanosecond about next year's or next ne next month's live stream. Um, I haven't had Nathan on in a little while. He, I think the last time he was on was maybe in June. Will Holland, if he's not in Paris or something, like so. Uh, in fact, I need to go to both of their houses, invite myself over. And, and shoot updated video of their tanks, especially Will. I haven't seen his tanks in a long time. Um, Will is a little bit of a jet setter, so catching him while he's on the ground here in Akron is going to be the key for that. But he's my boy. Like, actually, uh, I was just thinking about, so if you're curious about who the heck I'm talking about, Will has a, a very nice SPS tank, excuse me, that he was setting up as a reef savvy tank. Um, and there's a, a video or two on my channel of his stuff. He's been doing it for 30 years. Very, very good guy. Um, but yeah, what was I about to say about him? But yeah, to just like finding him, finding time with him sometimes can be a challenge. But I, I do need to, to do that. Yeah, but Will's my boy. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. He was the one who warned me early on in this whole building project. They're like, oh, things are going like really, really quickly right now. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, just be prepared. 
that it's going to go really, really, really fast, and at other times it's going to go really, 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 really slow for no reason. And I'm like, oh, but things are good right now, and I'll put up with any kind of delays. It's not a big deal. Man, delays does not begin to describe what's going on here. We've been building this building now for 12 months, and we literally just got electric in about a week ago. We still don't have septic. Like, man, I got stories. So the septic guy, he uh, like dropped off some topsoil because we have a, a mound septic system. You have to like, you know, pour, you know, pour topsoil and everything on top of it. So he had brought in topsoil, okay, so long ago, and he hasn't come back to actually do the work, so long ago that there's literally trees growing in the topsoil. Like, he's, when he came today to finish that stuff up, he's like, oh, I can't use that topsoil. There's too much stuff growing in it. I'm like, there's trees. There's, like, stuff that's five feet tall. Trees, like, with bark growing out of this thing. It's like, yeah, because you don't do your job, bruh, you know? And so he finally did something to that. And uh. Well, actually, it, it, it's okay, because you can see the two polyps there, the green guzoas. Not bad. You can kind of get an idea, but yeah. It'd be nicer if it was a more open. We can move on. So yes, Will warned me about delays, and I am in full-on delay season. And by season, I mean all year. But, but, no. Nope. Everybody's got to calm down. We'll be done one day. Unreal. Okay. Somebody else I was was also asking about like what are the tank sizes in, the, in my new building? Uh, I think that like my show my show tanks are going to be like seven hundred gallons or something like that. There's going to be two of those, uh, and there's going and we've ordered so far eight grow out tanks that are going to be three hundred gallons a piece. I think. Aaron Stuckey, I'm a new reef junk and I love your channel. Thank you very much, Aaron. I appreciate your support. Can I get a copper band to stay alive in my tank? Have any ideas on how? No, dude, it's tough. Like when it comes to fish, it's all about how much effort your supply chain has put into keeping that thing alive. So there's times when we've ordered a fish like wholesale. Everybody, everybody wants to like order stuff wholesale because if they think that, oh, it's so much cheaper, blah, blah, blah. It's a coin flip as to whether that fish is going to die. Straight up. That thing can be like super healthy, eating in the bag. 24 hours it'll be dead in your tank. So it might be a, a, a good idea to find places that have guarantees. Live Aquaria, for example. If you're into online, if you're not into online and only want to shop locally, uh, find a place locally that hopefully has some sort of quarantining procedure that lasts about three months. We are lucky to have one locally. It's called Triton Marine Aquaculture, I believe. Um, a couple that we've known for a while owns that place. And the guy, his name's Joel, is really big on quarantine and making sure to take care of the fish once they come in. And um, yeah, find a place like that. It's easy to make a stand from cinder blocks. I see you had some previous looks like a cool way to do it. Uh, it is, except it's difficult to like do any kind of like detail adjustment and it's very difficult to move in because it's so heavy. So in the new system, we're gonna be going with all aluminum T-slot. The 80-20 aluminum T-slot stuff. More expensive, but definitely lighter weight and I think it just looks a lot nicer. Uh, I almost like had a heart attack. So Aqua Splendor said, there's only 19 on the stream. Go, go people, click the likes stream. It's free. I thought he meant there's only 19 people on the stream. I'm like, did the stream die? <laughs> it's like, what? 
Uh, no. He meant there's only 19 likes on the video. So I'm like, okay. All right. We're good on that. So we're moving on to number 35. Nice. 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 Yeah, the aluminum T-slot stuff is cool. Um, I've seen it before. You can get it in multiple like different types of thicknesses. It's kind of like an erector set. And you just kind of uh, assemble it. And you can, obviously, you can change the design later if you wanted to. Um, yeah, it's cool stuff. I'm getting, obviously, like, so, so my first group of tanks that I had ordered, it's 10 total tanks. And each tank is 10 and a half feet long by between three to four feet wide. The show tanks are a full 24 inches tall. The grow out tanks are 15 inches tall. So they're big. And I was worried about moving them until I moved Rico's tank, or helped move. I didn't do a whole lot, believe me. Yeah, I didn't do a whole lot. Um, well, no, 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 I, I did. Actually, I can say that I, I am the reason why it is downstairs. I did a very, very critical thing at the risk of my own life. Um, but as far as like lifting goes, not a lot. Actually, I, I have video of, of me lifting that tank. Uh, it is not exactly good deadlifting form. That was all wrist. Forty B nasty. Do you feed Leptoceras? I don't really know. My jack o' lantern just died. Ugh. You do feed them. Okay. I don't put a ton of effort into feeding that type of coral. It grows like crazy here. Sometimes people have issues. Um, like one supplier that likes to purchase from us, he. Um, he really struggles with a couple of types of Leptoceras. And I think it might be just something chemical that these, they don't like in the water. Maybe some sort of phosphate remover or something. But definitely something bothers them. Also, I want to point out that this is really late in the, in the process here. But I should, uh, I should mention it. So Ben has a, a blue actinic LED flashlight. And so occasionally, you'll see the coral change color. And that is from the flashlight bringing out some fluorescence to give you just an idea of what that looks like under different types of lighting. How are your wrists so strong? Yeah, they're not. Just like the rest of me, not that strong. Didn't really contribute much in on that lift. <laughs> yeah, like my, my deadlift form, garbage. Total garbage. Uh, let's see, Sean, what would you use for filtration on a Sumplus 20 gallon nano? Sumplus 20 gallon. So it's kind of small for a skimmer. If I had to go like super high end, I would want to do like a continuous water change on that thing. Let's get yourself a, a Neptune dose and program that sucker up for to do a 20 gallon water change every week. Slowly, slowly. So I actually have heard of that lens. Um, I never messed with it. 40 be nasty. OK, thanks for the tip. I did use Fosgard. That could have done it all by itself right there. I think it's like the phosphate removing stuff really does a number on, on Leptoceras. So Matthew's wondering if I've ever come across branching Cyphastria. I have. Um, not often. And I even if when I did see it, I don't know if I was really compelled to purchase it, but I have seen it before. Um, if you want to just like a real quick shortcut, you can find a branching looking substrate and just grow it right over top. And it's because the fastria is, is very 
uh, very encrusting in that way. Like people grow that stuff on like skulls and pirate ships and stuff like that and put that in their tank. How long do you wait before selling a frag after cutting? Uh, it kind of depends. Like if you if you look, well, you can kind of tell by what the frag plug here looks like. The ones that are more white are going to be ones that were fragged more recently. Um, if I had to guess, the most fresh ones would probably be about 72 hours, if I had to guess. And the real benefit there is that it's less likely for the coral to come loose. Having said that, I can only say less likely because these things, when it comes to shipping, get kicked around like crazy by FedEx. Um, we've literally had a box get carried out to the truck and fell from like head height onto the ground before it ever even made it to the truck. That sort of stuff happens. And I can only imagine what happens in distribution after that. So when sometimes a, a customer will say, hey, this thing came detached from its plug, I'm like, It could happen. It's not the most gentle process getting stuff shipped. But you can, you can watch our video on how we ship these things. We try really hard to completely isolate these things so they don't move, they don't bounce around or anything. But even then, I mean, if people are like throwing them through the air and then like, you know, having them crash down on the floor over and over and over again for 24 hours, who knows what they do. Oh, and by the way, when it, whenever like the box says right side up, that is the last time you'll ever see that thing right side up, just so you know. Um, you just kind of have to, to hope, hope that your, your packing was, was good enough to keep that thing alive. Leptos like phosphate. They might like phosphate, very, very, very likely. The other thing is uh, a lot of times the phosphate removers strip out a lot more than just phosphate. And so a lot of times uh, certain corals react very, very poorly to phosphate stripping. Jesse Wang just got one of those cheap T5 fixtures switched from Ocean Revive black boxes. Cool. We, we still use tons and tons and tons of these T5s. Nano Junkie, sup guys, hello Nano. Actually, I should say your whole name, Nano Junkie, because I'm sure that there's like 10 other people in, in chat that's Nano something. So welcome, Nano Junkie. The weather here has just been nuts. Like, it looks like it's going to storm outside, doesn't it, Ben? It looks gross out there. It looks gross. But at least it's at least it's cool. Well, ah, plug the Lobo video. So the video previous to the Aquashella video we did on Lobo brains. So if you guys are interested in Lobos, you can check out that video. And most of the ones that we showed on that video are for sale as frags during this show. Hi, Reef. Hey, Stan. My name is Than. <laughs> but hello, I, Reef. 40 be nasty. Worked for UPS for 16 years. He speaks the truth about shipping. Yeah. Oh, I know. I've been paying for about 16 years on shipping. <laughs> it's like shipping has like a murder rate. It's like Chicago. Jason says his leptoceros get white when his phosphate drops too low. He doses phosphate and it colors back up. Funny, because in set two, one of our systems here, we just number them, uh, we have like an overabundance of leptoceros. And we have out insanely high phosphate levels. <laughs> like, <laughs> like one part per million of phosphate. So it is... It's no uh, surprise then that the, the Leptoceras are doing amazingly well there. So well we can't even sell them that fast. 
How big are those Lobos? Uh, the, uh, or a couple inches, because like the, the frag plugs that you're seeing are one inch. Are they an inch and a quarter? I thought they were like one inch. Okay. They're between an inch to an inch and a quarter. So gauging by that, you can kind of tell the size of stuff. Uh, okay, nice shirt. Thank you, Lions Life. Click clack. What's up, Dan? What is up? Okay. Huh. Huh. For a forty eight by twenty four by sixteen frag tank. Would you need minimum six or eight T fives? The cheap T five fixers are only four bulb, right? Uh, you can get them all the way up to twelve, I believe. Like you have to, you have to go through Amazon just a little bit. So you can ch you can check out my link. I think that one links to a four bulb. But I have purchased a six. I have purchased an eight, and I think that they did come with a twelve. I just didn't. I mean, a twelve is like very wide. So you'd have to have like a shoot. You'd have to have like a forty-eight inch tank, yeah, for a twelve bulb fixture. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're all like various degrees of cheap Chinese manufacture. So you can find some stuff from different factories. Amazon, it's like the, the breeding ground for cheap Chinese stuff. You, you can find some good stuff, though. Beastie Boy, does he have audio? Is there something wrong with my audio now? Can you guys still hear me? Hopefully you guys can. So sound check real fast. Please tell me in chat, can you guys hear me? Or is it just Beastie Boy that can't hear me? What about the guys that ship hundreds of fish from the Philippines? Do they overnight everything? I think so. What methods do you use to control nitrates? And what methods are you recommended to control nitrates in the 55? Uh, your best friend is going to be lots of live rock. In the display, potentially in the sump. Sound check is good, thank you. <laughs> BC Boy's like, I just had to restart my bad. No, no worries. I hey, that you, you know what? My my eyes and ears always perk up whenever I see any kind of like technical thing. You know, it's like if if somebody's just like saying oh, audio's dead, I'm like, uh oh, that we have a bigger problem on our hands. Sean Davies is like, I can only hear Ben. <laughs> What's the shipping cost on these corals? So I'm going to go over the rules real quick. So the shipping cost, to answer your question, it's $39.99 flat rate, and it's free over $250. So we recommend purchasing per coral, just because that's the only way to actually reserve it. So you have to complete the checkout process. So if you see something you like now, but then a hundred corals later you want to add something, just continue to add, um, just com complete each purchase separately. But as the shipping option, there's like the live sale slash add to an order one. And you'll want to do that rather than getting charged multiple instances of, the, of that $39.99. Now, if you happen to pay twice or you end up over 250, don't worry, we, we sort that all out before shipping. Okay. And we're back. Okay, we're moving on to number 53 some pipe organs. 
We've been doing mostly Zoas all up to this point, haven't we? A couple hammers mixed in there. I saw a Leptoceras. That's how. Uh, that's how we got to that kind of part of the conversation. I can't wait to get the new building up and running so that we can actually focus more on propagation. Because it might seem kind of nutty, but right now we have a lot of, of stuff like just stacked on top of each other. We're really, really, really tight for space. Aqua Splendor, what's your biggest single shipment of coral to, that I ever did? I don't even know because a lot of times like we don't do as much in the way of acquisition as other places might because I'm looking for like the one or two really 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 nice pieces of coral to bring in and propagate forever like that's that's my that's my model so a lot of times if I'm spending a lot of money it's not for like the onesie twosie thing that I really 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 want a lot of the times it's on stuff that can't be propagated that just has a high price tag. So if I'm spending thousands of dollars, it's probably because I was running low on scolies and I went there and I bought them all up, that sort of thing. So it's not like, oh, I got a huge shipment. I just spent a lot on stuff that I can't propagate, if that makes sense. Yeah, he's a little tight looking. But these guys are, as far as Ganiapora go, they tend to have a, a poor reputation for survival. But these Harlequin Ganiapora, we've been propagating now for at least, I don't know, years. So stale meme. Oh man, I miss Zoas. I'm, I'm in the market for those in Xenia. I think you can scrub back in the timeline, or did they change that on the live stuff on YouTube? You used to be able to. Any special care for this cherry blossom alveopora? Not so much. Um, you can try feeding, but I, I wonder if it's a, a lot of the, of the bacterial stuff that they consume. Because the guy that has a ton of success with Ganiopora, like way more success than me, he runs this ultra low nutrient system. Like he does, like he used to do Zeovit, he does uh, Aquaforest now, which I'm not into at all. But he has great success with Ganiopora in that. So I wonder if it is this, um, like this, this bacterial methodology where they're consuming a lot of the, the stuff that, that, that's growing there. Pipe organs, I think more than any kind of nutrients, I think what they need a lot more of is flow. I've noticed that the ones that are not in good flow tend to die off. I would almost hit them with as much flow as they can handle. Yeah, Whiskey Clown, 50 part per million nitrate is real high. And the phosphate is also real high. The more concerning of those two numbers for me, even though like your phosphate number is easily 600 times what it should be, but the nitrate is more concerning than the phosphate number. I've had higher phosphate than that without much problem, but I've never had 50 part per million nitrate and not had a problem. Is this a snow cap, Monty? Yes. Okay. Eric D, so many beautiful pieces. I need more tanks and beans. You and me both. I'm well on my way to getting the more tanks, though. The more beans, hopefully, I'll need them. I have a feeling that the thing contributing most to my, my phosphate issues here, it's probably the food that we're feeding. We make our own food. 
um, or it's just from like the, the spring, summer, fall pollen situation here. We're in a greenhouse, it's wide open, anything that comes off the trees ends up in the water and that just spikes up everything. Part of the reason why we're doing this new building thing. What easy corals do you recommend that a clown can host in? So I, I'm usually not a huge fan of corals for clown hosting, just because a lot of corals get stressed out by clowns. But if you have like a gigantic frog spawn, that could be of something. Uh, I, I also like how they look in like gigantic toadstool leathers. 61, just got some Montipora. Considering how we've basically gone through the whole summer, our corals are looking really nice. And I think part of that is we've been going through um, a lot of weird weather this, this particular summer. And so we've paid a lot more attention to cool evenings and we're, we actually have our heater on, like in the dead of summer. Like we've never, ever, ever in our history heated our tanks in July. It would never happen. But yeah, this entire summer we've left the heater on. And I think that um, kind of having a more consistent water temperature has done wonders for especially these SPS. Like, I mean, Idaho Great Montipora tends to be fairly consistent, but with a lot of the other ones that, uh, I mean, especially like stuff like rainbow monties and stuff like that, we would probably lose three quarters of our colonies just cause. And, and now that we're becoming a little bit more savvy with this stuff, I think that it was just cold evenings in the, in the dead of summer that needed, that needed additional heating. I think this is the first time in history where people are running into issues of having water that's too clean. Because um, I think that the technology in this hobby is getting to the point where it can drastically reduce the amount of, of nutrients that are in the water. And so I have like, you know, like professional aquarists, like you know, people that their livelihood depends on this sort of thing in big scale systems, actually considering turning their skimmers off for portions of the day to, or even like f full days to allow for, um, yeah, for some nutrient buildup so that the corals can actually feed. It's pretty crazy. I never really have that problem here because who knows what's making it its way into the tank and causing nutrient spikes. But yeah, like I've never really messed with GFO or anything like that. Very rarely do I mess with that even now. Even when I have super high phosphate, I am really careful to, when it comes to, to delving into that. <clears throat> so, okay, so iReef is wondering, what's the coldest your tank can go? without any issues. Oh, by the way, hi Jamie, how's it going? Long time no see. That's Rico's wife, Jamie, by the way, for those in chat. So, okay, way back when I started, we didn't have monitoring probes that kept, uh, kept, kept track of temperatures for us. So we would just check it at like noon every day. And noon every day would be like, in the winter time, it'd be like, oh, it's 72, whatever, it's great. Little did we know, like once we were actually monitoring 24-7, that the temperature can drop significantly. Those tanks, I don't know, they might have gone down to 65 degrees at night. Could be bad, could be bad. Yeah, now generally speaking, we don't, go, we don't dip below 75. If we're, if we're around 72 in the dead of winter, I'm not that happy.
So what's the best temperature for bubble tip? I wouldn't get too creative. I would stay between 77 to 79 for absolutely everything. Having said that, do you guys run into a situation where like Astrea snails die on you? Because sometimes they die in numbers here that are higher than I would like. Because they do such a good job cleaning and I wonder, A, are they starving? Which I guess could be possible. We keep our tanks pretty clean for them. And, but they help with the cleaning, you know? Or is it a temperature issue? Because I don't know where they're being collected. And sometimes when they say like, oh, these snails are collected in Mexico. And I'm thinking like Caribbean Mexico, but it could just as easily be West Coast Monterey, Mexico, and that water's freezing cold. So, you know, I'm wondering, are we cooking our snails? Uh, or yeah, because like especially in the summertime where it gets like you know 78, 79 in here. I don't know. I just want to take better care of like these things that clearly help us keep this place clean, you know. Uh, Tattoo dancer ninety one. How would you frack suspicularia? You know the the thing about suspicularia isn't cutting it; it's getting it to reattach to anything. That's the real challenge. Um, we haven't had the best success doing it, so I'm probably the wrong guy to be asking. Um, but the actual cutting isn't typically the thing that kills it, it's the rolling around aimlessly after that that does. Enrico, I can't wait for the barbecue again, neither can I. I'm actually looking forward to it for a change. Um, we have some ideas that could make it better. We'll have a lot more fun. I'm not going to spoil anything, but we realize that it is a, it's a big undertaking for people to fly in if they need to, or a long drive, possibly stay a night in a hotel nearby. I mean, it's a big expense to come visit here. So we want to make it more worth the visitor's time, you know, because I mean, we get it. It's, it, it's hard to get away for that, for that, you know, for that weekend and stuff. So. We're, we're, we're still trying to look out for you. I mean, clearly Tidal Gardens is a good enough destination, but it's expensive. Say what? <laughs> yeah, we need DJs. I'm 100% sure there's a local DJ in town that could probably do work for Coral. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do worry about the snails starving because like when we buy them, we get them like a thousand at a time. And when we put them in the tank, they just practically overnight do work. And so I'm guessing like over time, do they kind of just run out of food? And if they're running out of food, it's like, well, what can I feed them? Because we have like sinking algae pellets and I don't think that they really latch onto those. So it's just something that I'm, that I'm thinking about. Yeah, snails are tough. Like, even the snails that do really well, um, like those are t those are for us. They're, they're tough to get because a they're more expensive. B they oftentimes don't survive shipping from a wholesaler. So I really like, for example, um, trochus snails. They're a, they're a Pacific snail. I don't know if they do quite as good a job cleaning as an Astrea, but it's close. They can flip themselves back over, that's nice. They also reproduce in the aquarium, that's nice. But I've literally had an entire shipment just wipe itself out in, within 72 hours. So, not good, not good. 
So we, we've been sticking to Astrea for the time being. Problem with DJing for Coral, no one wants to pay the 100 an hour. Imagine DJing for 68 hours, no one would pay that in Coral, that's almost a full tank of stuff. Uh, Reef Ghost, funny you mention that. Like, I actually don't care if it's six to $800 in Coral. Like, I don't. And it goes surprisingly fast if you, if you get into some higher end stuff. So for example, um, next door, big building, we, uh, one of the customers was like, hey, you know, I have a professional painting company. If you ever guys ever need painting, I'd be happy to work out some deal. And we're like, yeah, how much coral credit do you want? Because we have tons of painting projects around. And he's like, we just worked it out. And no joke, he easily had like $5,000 in coral credit. And we're talking about doing a second coat, potentially, probably not, but potentially, for even more coral credit, I'm just like, I just want to make sure that you can actually spend all this coral credit because I don't want it you know, to be a total you know, wash for you. But he's just like, oh, I have no doubt that I could spend the money in, in coral. I just want to make sure of X, Y, Z and, and scheduling. And I'm like, okay, because if you can spend the money, if, if you can legitimately spend between five to ten thousand dollars here we'll give you five to ten thousand dollars in coral credit for something that we want you don't need a dj just speakers in a random playlist yeah but you need some guy to like hit play and pump his fist though it's not the same otherwise and and the hip-hop horn yes Did I just like ruin Tomorrowland for all these people? <clears throat> That's all they do, guys. They hit play, they pump their fist for three hours, and they get paid like a million dollars. Eric D, trade is awesome. I wish more people would do it. Yeah, we're generally pretty good about the whole horse trading thing. Um, a, a lot of times it is just making sure that the other person has, has use for that much credit. Coral, Bitcoin, yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I will trade coral for Bitcoin. I, I guess that's like taking Bitcoin for payment, right? <laughs> is that kind of like the same thing? So this, this Dragon Soul Favia, if somebody has a Bitcoin, I will trade. Try zucchini for snails and hermit crabs. That's interesting. I have not tried that yet. Seventy-eight. Got some war corals and favias and favites. It looks like. We've been streaming now for almost two hours, wow. Because we got started super early. You know what, I'll, I'll tell you what, knock on wood, stream quality is okay. And just as I said that, I'm getting like a yellow warning. <laughs> so please tell me if we're good. Hopefully uh, this isn't too bad as far as lag or anything. Uh, Miguel Angel Gutierrez San Pablo, do you send to Spain? Unfortunately, no, this is US only. Robert, I have a condo in Puerto Vallarta. You can stay there for a week for a coral trade. <laughs> 
That actually might be good. <laughs> what number are we on? What's that? What number? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I was just remarking that like, no, stream so far has been really good. And then blam, yellow. It goes from green to yellow. I'm like, oh, damn it. And, and we immediately dropped six frames, which again, not, not the end of the world. But I'm like, we were at like nine frames dropped or eight frames and now we're at 14. I'm like, man. Man, is that a, a Lord Howenzis, Ben? Yes. That thing looks incredible. That's the weirdest looking Lord I've ever seen. Huh. <clears throat> Yeah, Rico's previous channel went away for some reason. I think it might have got caught in the whole uh, YouTube culling of a whole bunch of, of channels. Chris Harkins, I have, a, I have a house in Vegas to stay at for Coral Trade <laughs> for Macna. You know, that's a good idea. Somebody would take you up on that, I'm sure. Yeah, see, right, right the, the very next comment. <laughs> it's like, I'll take that offer. See? See? It, 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 I need to start like Coral B&B. &B. Okay, stream health is cleared up. Good. Good, good. It's freaking me out. Freaking me out. It's it's funny that 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 the uh, there's so little faith in the economy that coral is like the de facto currency in chat now. Remember when I pitched doing a coral box service? Lol, look at World Ride Corals now. I wonder how that does work um, on, on the hobby end. Because it, it kind of works on a store end because you know, stuff comes in regularly for them to sell. But for a hobbyist, I mean, would you guys like a mystery box? I guess mystery boxes do sell here. We don't do a monthly thing, but absolutely mystery box does sell here. Sometimes we do like a, an SPS pack or something or a Zoanthid pack, a little bit less money. So it's, it's, you're saving a little bit, but you know, we're picking it all out. Uh, yeah, th those type typically do sell, especially the Zoa pack. Uh, Frederick, can you take coral on an airplane? I believe you can. I like to buy it. Okay, <laughs> sometimes I complain about YouTube channels, okay, because a lot of times people make the same video over and over and over again. And one video that does get made often is like stuff like, oh no, my, my whole tank crashed. Oh no, my, my named fish of some sort died. But another one that's becoming more common these days is me illegally flying with coral or something like that. And it's just about how to fly legally with coral. So it could happen. So by the way, Ben, there is like a big yellow glare when your t-shirt is not in frame. There you go. That's all that is, guys. It's a big like sunlit glare. There it is. Yeah. So good thing Ben is wearing a black shirt. Number 
As far as like corals going between countries, that is a completely other bit of nonsense. Um, yeah, hard, hard to do. Yeah, and kind of like going back into the comments, back to the, uh, the, the box idea, I think we're going to be getting more into that once we get systems up and running in the, in the new building. Even like for the, I mean, I know that like several um, stores and stuff like that watch these shows and they're, they're all like saying, you know, when are you going to get into wholesale? When wholesale? 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 And we might put our like just get our toe in the water with that a little bit in the way of like having a 100 coral pack or something. Um, you know, something that would actually provide like legitimate savings for volume. Because that's kind of like the, 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 the wholesale trade off there. So we might do something like that. We'll see. Because once, we, once we're up and running over there, I mean, theoretically, we could be producing a heck of a lot. Well, just with the number of tanks that we've got so far on order, that's like roughly a little bit less than half the building. I think it's already like several times bigger than what we've got going on here as far as usable tank space goes. So Ben, for this side, yeah, the, the color temperature needs to get adjusted. Okay, so I believe you have to hit, there should be like a, a white balance button or, you know, actually no, what you do is you hit the ISO button and then you toggle the little joystick over to the left until you get to the color temperature stuff. There you go. And you can start kind of messing it, messing with it through that way. Actually, that right there does not look that bad. Okay. Then we're good. Hopefully that looks uh, looks good for you guys in stream. For for whatever reason, that set of tanks has different bulbs hanging above it, so it has like more purpley weirdness going on. So we always have to adjust it, and then we ju adjust it back. Rico's aquariums. I'm going to do a 1,000 coral pack. Yeah. You should. <laughs> I probably should. You want to pack a thousand corals, Ben? Oh, yeah, I can't wait. Mm -hmm. yeah, he just can't wait. That he 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 lives for that type of day. <laughs> All right. This is eighty-seven, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jeff's reef tank, a hundred coral pack. Yeah. Yeah, so that might make sense, especially for the folks that are doing like shows. You know, maybe they want, you know, something sent direct. I don't know if people even still do that. Do they send like stuff directly to the hotel where the show is going on? I mean, sometimes that could happen. Not sure if that's good practice, but I've heard of it happening. Like, again, I haven't done the show thing in a really long time. Jeff's Roof Tank, I would do an SPS subscription. Okay, interesting. How how much light do Duncans need? Very middle of the road, not a whole ton of not a whole ton. Anything around fifty would probably be fine. Don't probably need anything more than a hundred par. What is the biggest purchase someone has made with you guys? Um, well, okay, if you're not talking about like stores, because occasionally like a store can come in and literally leave with like boxes upon boxes upon boxes and that's not really wholesale it's more like distributor level stuff because like they're getting deals because they're buying 100 golden leptoceras they're buying 50 such and such montipora they're buying 50 such and such zoanthid that type of volume it's not like oh it's a grab bag of 50 different zoas it's like one type of zoa 50 units so sometimes they will just fill up their truck um, 
for an, an actual individual hobbyist coming here, uh, occasionally you'll find somebody that just wants fantastic, hard to find LPS. And they will pay premium dollars for that because they understand how uncommon that is. Like you'll see one or, one or two of those a year, it's gonna cost four figures or darn close to it. And so sometimes, you know, a, a group or like it's usually just one individual will come in and buy like a, buy, a bunch of really, really, really nice pieces. Uh, so it kind of depends. At the end of the day, they spend close to the same amount of money, but one, one is getting like very, very, very few high-end show pieces while the other one is getting like redonkulous volume, if that makes sense. <clears throat> Love from Singapore. Thank you very much. X L H A. Aqua Splendor. I have to go edit a video. Good stream as always. Thank you very much. Good luck with your video editing. Not my favorite pastime, <laughs> but good. I wish I was a better editor. At the same time, I wish that I just had a better editor instead and not have to do it. Rookie Reefer, have you ever kept different colored hammers in close proximity for a long time? Yes. Got a new mate that's really nice system and there's a bunch of different hammers that, that they have swapped. Yeah, you can do it. I mean, <coughs> is it ideal? Yeah, maybe not, but, but it looks good and it's they don't really get too fighty, so there's that. This is actually kind of cool to see because like in the background you're seeing all the Euphilia moving but it's out of focus. Number 94. Also, enjoy these uh, candy canes while they're still available because they're not exactly getting imported very much anymore. A lot of this stuff is like Fiji Indonesian stuff and if you've been kind of keeping track of coral news, um, those geographies have kind of shut down for a much longer time period than people were expecting. Like especially the Indonesian stuff, people were thinking, oh, it's just a clerical error with such and such ministry and you know, it's, it, they'll, they'll get it resolved quickly. Well, it's been months and it hasn't been resolved. So, you know, there's some concern over that. It's not quite as bad for, for propagators, but definitely for people that, do, that are heavily involved in import, um, yeah, it's both Fiji and Indonesia have effectively stopped and Fiji reopened for fish but not really for coral. And there's some talk about, um, about Australia also getting constricted. It hasn't happened yet, but um, yeah, there's some concern there. Wildlife, do you post your macro photos anywhere in high res? Your photos are incredible. Thanks. That's actually Ben's work. Um, no, I don't think we do. We just share the social media and stuff like that. I might do like, like, like um, you know, way down the line, like prints and stuff like that. Uh, so if people wanted to, to uh, you know, get that framed or something, we can offer. We've, we've been thinking about that type of stuff for like a really long time, but we, we haven't actually gone through with it. <laughs> Rookie Reefer, your corals look on point tonight. Thank you. We, we work at it because, um, I don't know if you're here for the beginning of the show, but this show should, in theory, look the best just from a, like a technology standpoint. Uh, we are pumping out a very high data rate 
upload. In Rainer Alter, greetings from Germany. Greetings. Let's stop at Skittles Platygyra, the number 98, Ben. And then I'm going to use the bathroom again. I've been drinking like soft drinks this whole time. So one sec, guys. I'll be right back. Gross, it's raining outside. So it kind of stinks that it's raining out, but I have to say that it is good for lighting in here. <laughs> so your corals are looking a lot nicer. Number 99. Jamie Garcia, I love Millie's. Do they come from Indonesia? Many of them do. A lot of them also come from Australia. Um, Ravinder, hello guys, hello, welcome. How about a calendar? I'm missing the context, missing the context. Was Indo really responsible for 70% of the coral imports? Yes, probably. I don't know the exact numbers, but I, I believe that Indonesia was the biggest volume geography out there. Rookie, is this a C200 or C100? This is a C200. So we are broadcasting at 1080p, 60 frames per second at nearly 10 megabits per second upload, which is the highest l data rate that my broadcasting software will, will do at this particular resolution and frame rate. So it's as good as it's really realistically going to get until I... So this might be as good as it gets because we can do we can do a higher um, resolution upload. For example, we can do 1440, but I, the problem that I run into is I think that the color suffers if I don't give it enough data. And so this might be like the, the perfect sweet spot between color, resolution, and frame rate for all you video tech nerds out there. Uh, long story short, this, well, long story short, this might be like the, the, the secret sauce to a really good looking stream. One zero two. Frags look pretty good on this live show. Thanks. We're working at it again. It's uh, we're always from an like, from an audiovisual standpoint. We're always trying to to up our game. It might be a little bit hard to up our game past this, but we're always trying. I think it's amazing that we've done this this live show now for a few years, and there's very few other places uh, doing anything similar. I know that I've seen one other place do it. I mean, I mean, I'll ask you guys because you you guys are probably looking to to shop more than I am for this sort of thing. But 
I can only think of maybe like one or two other people that have ever even attempted it. Um, so, I mean, free publicity for those guys. But if you have, or if you're familiar with other companies, go ahead and toss them into the chat. And because I'm curious, because it's, it's a major technological hurdle. So believe me, I'm not that jealous. It's, it's not that easy. So yeah, definitely, uh, you know, shout those guys out because I know what kind of effort it takes to do like a, a decent looking live show. And, and, and I'm genuinely curious. Does, does Worldwide Corals actually do a video live stream? Because if they, if, they, if they do, I haven't seen it. I know that like, there's like the Reef to Reef like forum based like live shows or live sales, but no, I'm talking like a live video feed. Say what? Yeah, so Ben said Cush Corals, which by the way, I met those guys at Aquashella. Yeah, and I think that they, theirs was on Facebook. Um, trying to think if there's any others. I know there's other people that do shows on Facebook, but I don't know if they do like a selling show. I'm not really sure. Yeah, and no, no one's saying anything in, in chat about another place, so yeah. Yeah, like I said, it is a major technological hur hurdle. And sometimes it's not even about like the, 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 like a particular company's ability to do it. A lot of times, if you're just in the wrong geography, it's like, sorry, dude, you're in Somalia. You're, you're kind of screwed. And you don't have good internet. Like, that's just how it is. Like, because that was us for, for years leading up to this, you know? We just didn't have the data rate to, to do a high quality show. Um, you know, we have the cameras, we've got the corals, we have the lighting, but unless you have the data to, to actually get to YouTube at a high enough quality, it's gonna look like a potato. It's gonna be like bird of potato frag. And you're not gonna get $20 for it, you know, that sort of stuff. So. I'm just glad that we, we kind of lucked into a halfway decent upload speed and we have everything else in place already to, to, to deliver what it is that we're even doing now. You know, Mark at Malev's Reef, yeah, I, I think he, he, does live, he does live stuff on YouTube quite frequently. OSA has once, not sure if it was through Facebook. You know what, I met those guys. Um, shoot, I think his name's Scott, and I think the girl, the girl is Sherry. I met them at Aquashella. Um, he had mentioned doing something on Facebook. I was kind of picking his brain about that because we don't do quite as much on Facebook, and so it's always, it's always interesting to hear other people's experience with other social networks. Um, but yeah, I heard that they do something on Facebook, and since I'm bar barely ever on Facebook, I never would, would see it. But yeah, I, I heard he does some, so, some, uh, some live video there. I, so Jeff's Reef Tank said, that means title is king of, of live shows. And so, so you know what? Rico is, is probably sitting at home seething at that comment. <laughs> Rico's like, I'm the king. I spent 12 hours a day streaming. I better get credit for being the king. <laughs> That's funny. Scotty, yes. Yeah, I, I remember his name, Scotty. It's like Scotty and, and Sherry, I think. Yeah, House in Vegas has one gig fiber. Uh, okay, here's a, here's a quick story. I, I've, I've, I know I've like railed on this before. All my friends have one gig. I'm the only one that can use one gig upload fiber, and I'm the only one that doesn't have it. Like Sean, the, the Sean personal trainer has it. Uh, Tech Gear Talk, he has it. Lawson has it. Uh, ben 
two minutes down the street is going to get 100 up, 100 down. Like, I don't care about 100 down. I get 300 down, doesn't matter. 100 down is fine. 100 up, now we're talking. Because if I had 100 up, you guys are about to see 4K60 live. Lisa's Aquatics, hello. You're late. <laughs> How's it going? Welcome. Welcome to, to Canada. Lisa, she is the GOAT moderator, if you guys didn't already know. Greatest of all time, that's what GOAT stands for. That's why she's, that's why she's uh, the wrench in everybody else's live stream. <laughs> How is the turnout of your cook, cook off, cookout? Do you plan on doing more? Yes, maybe more than once a year. I don't know about more than once a year, possibly. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Um, the turnout was pretty good. I mean, we didn't do like a final head count. A lot of people had to cancel. I mean, a lot of people that bought plane tickets, that got hotel rooms, they had to cancel because like something came up. So it was kind of unfortunate for them. Um, it was a really, really fun time. Good food, good company. Uh, we got to, you know, obviously see a lot of cool stuff here that, you know, in, in the works. And next year's barbecue, automatically will be better because it will be a year more of production going on next door. And so I don't know if Rico's still in chat, but I'm going to give away a little, little bit of a teaser as to what I would like to do. I would like to get more, um, which one is this one? Is this 113? 112. 112. Okay. Just checking. Um, what I wanted to do was have more YouTube personalities. Uh, not that the, we didn't have enough YouTube personalities or anything, but it's like I just wanted more. And I wanted to use like our new studio where it might actually be a working studio and essentially live stream the entire barbecue event the entire time it's going on. So if it's going on for like six to eight hours, we're live streaming the whole time. And every hour or so, I'll bring in a different YouTube personality onto the live stream, we'll just hang out, we'll chill. In the background, you'll see like our tanks, you'll see people, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll show the actual barbecue itself. You know, if you see, you know, somebody's face, you want to give a shout out live, you, you can call people out to, to bring them onto the camera, you know, take them up to the, to the studio, hang out, you know, yeah, just, yeah, basically just hang out, answer questions, take viewer comments, and just like rotate all day through all your favorite YouTube personalities. So basically it's like, yes, there's the big barbecue happening here, but I want the people that couldn't attend to be also to essentially experience it along with us. You have to kind of bring your own food and drink, obviously, but the idea is, you know, just for the, for the camaraderie, for the conversation, for it to be very, very inclusive and like leverage the whole digital aspect of it. So that's kind of like what we were thinking. <clears throat> you sad about the about King LeBron leaving? I, I, I'm I'm all right. He can do whatever he wants. He won us a championship ring, and he's he's still super active in this area. Like you don't, a, a lot of it, uh, you know, does make the you know the news and stuff like the, like his school and stuff like that. But he's very 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 active in this area. He lives five minutes down the road. So, no, I get plenty of LeBron. I don't need him to play for my team. My team is going to be hot garbage this coming year. It's going to be hard to watch Cavalier basketball. I'm good, though. I'm good. Hope he, hopes he has a good time in L.A. I, I'm not bitter. <clears throat> and, yes, Blue Basin Aquatics. Lisa Aquatics, is she is the queen of moderation. <laughs> Rico is the, 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 the live stream king. I'm the live sale king, a.k.a. Dr. No. <laughs> Everybody's got, everybody has to have like multiple handles. It's like Rico is the live stream king, a.k.a. Brokeback Rico. <laughs> Sorry, Rico, I had to do it to you. Every everybody gets abused here. Like if like 
I don't know why anybody wants to be my friend because all, all my friends take it like so bad from me. <clears throat> Ugh. Yeah, but I, I am looking forward to the whole uh, the whole barbecue YouTube get together. That's why we're kind of like you know talking to people in advance. We haven't picked out a date or anything, so. You know, we're not like exactly pounding everybody's door down saying like, hey, you know, come to our barbecue. When is it? We don't know. Um, but we're just, it just conceptually, we're throwing some ideas around. I think it'll be a good time. You're an equal opportunity abuser. <laughs> like one time I was like sick. <clears throat> and I was hanging out with my friends. This was like out in Michigan where most of my friends live. And I just was very, very, very quiet at dinner just because I wasn't feeling well. And like there, there were people at the dinner table that just didn't know who, you know, didn't know who I was. They were just meeting for the first time. And they were all just saying like, because, you know, my friends would sometimes like throw a joke at, you know, in my direction. I wouldn't really say anything back. They're like, oh, you're being so mean to him. And they're like, you don't have to worry about him. He, <laughs> he dishes it out way more than he, than he takes it. He's good for tonight. So, uh, yeah, we pick on those we love. Yeah, yeah. If you were my neighbor, I would probably be divorced. <laughs> I'm hoping that's in reference to buying coral. All right, Rookie Reefer, last question. How many times have you had a piece that you couldn't positively identify? Any real oddball coral stories? Occasionally. So sometimes there, there's going to be something that like looks like, and it'll, it'll look like a Leptoceras, but it could be a really flat pavona. <clears throat> So you'll have like people disagreeing on whether that's a pavona or a leptoceras. That happens occasionally. Something that might look like a parites, but it could be a montipora, or it could be something even weirder, like a cyanocineella or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, occasionally you just see like an oddball that that's kind of like that. There, there's some, some corals that are tweeners, and it doesn't help that if you do like an internet search, uh, you get like the entire gamut. Like you, you see three different places call it three different types of coral. And the thing is, none of us are like taxonomy experts. So we could all three be wrong. It's entirely possible. Johnny Jordan, Dan, what do you dose in your tanks? Um, we don't really dose anything. We do water changes and we run calcium reactors. And we probably should do more in the way of water changes and we should probably do a better job of maintaining our calcium reactors. But um, we, don't do, we don't dose any calc. We don't do any two-part, nothing like that. It's very straightforward calcium reactor water change. Is it the best? Maybe not, but... Um, it, it does work for us. It's going to be, as far as what's going to work best for you, kind of consider, you know, what your maintenance regimen looks like. Consider what types of corals you're trying to grow. Consider the sizes of those corals. All sorts of things. It, it's, it's, it, you're always trying to hit a moving target when it comes to a successful reef. And oftentimes, it is the successful reef that is more challenging because if you just have like 10 frags of SPS, you don't really have to worry about your calcium and alkalinity, to be perfectly honest. It's 10 little frags. But those 10 little frags in two years might be 10 gigantic colonies. And suddenly, your calcium and alkalinity and magnesium are going to be very challenging. Same 10 corals, just multiplied you know, in size 50-fold. And suddenly, you, know, you have completely different demands on your system. Always a moving target. <clears throat> and for, for those of you that are interested in Ganyapora, but might be a little bit gun-shy because of hardiness, 
Alveopora might be a good alternative. Very similar, but they have a, a better reputation for survival. <clears throat> so Ben, I think it's funny, like during like the, the, the pre-game where we were all just kind of like hanging out and talking, like all the super chats are like flowing in. And once the live show actually started, it just went like dead. <laughs> it's like, nope, you're getting money from coral sales now. <laughs> Uh, 124. It's getting like gross and stormy out. Oh, by the way, let me know if you guys are hearing like wind in, into the mic, okay? Because I can fix that. Because it, it, it was like still for the most part here. And then suddenly now it's getting windier and windier, like we're about to get a thunderstorm. And welcome back, Tech Your Talk. One twenty-five. Um, uh, no, we're good. I'll, I'll go over the rules once we get to the end of this row. And it's getting really windy. This is gross. Okay. Uh, no, I'm good. I'll just put my chair back against it. Daniel Valderrama is an Aiken Maximum Maxima. A mini Scully. I'm confused. No. An Acan Maxima, just an Acan. <clears throat> 126. All right. Good night, Rookie Reefer. Have a good one. Not sure if we're hearing thunder or wind. It's wind. A little wind, but it's not bad. Okay. Because I do have like what's called like a dead cat that I can stick on here. Hopefully it's not too, too bad. Because I'm like right in like the, the wind stream of this building. And this is a problem one day that I will not be having in a new building with the studio. I, I do have echo issues like you wouldn't believe though. So my throat is a little sore because I, it feels like I've gone the full three hours, but it's because we started so early that I basically have. So I feel like it's five o'clock as far as like this is concerned. So this guy here is one of my favorite Montipora. Um, the thing I like about it is it's not your standard orange plating. It has like yellow polyps. There's also like a, a hybrid uh, morph of this that has like the green as well mixed in there, which is pretty cool. So it's like the green, the orange with the yellow polyps. But that's not this one. This is just the red and yellow. And like I said, I'm just, I'm just looking forward to a time when we just have less construction issues to worry about here. There's like so many like just distractions, you know? Like I would like to get more videos up for you guys. But it is just so tiring to go through like a full day of, you know, managing construction projects to then sit down and edit, which is already like laborious, all, you know, and... And you know, so I, I guess that there are some people that really like dig editing and they just want to dive in and that's really what their, their thing is. Like my thing is more cinematography and when it comes to editing, I do like the most rudimentary basic edits. But you know, I make it clean and it still takes like all day to do those. So I'm hoping to do, um, my, my next video here is gonna be just on the, the tank move for, for Rico. And after that, I think we're going to hop right back into 
coral related content. Any, anytime I stray a little bit too far away from just like the, the, the pure coral stuff, it's like I can definitely tell that yeah, people can get a little antsy. So like the last the last video I did was obviously Aquashella. And then I'll be doing a tank move once. So I, I kind of need to get back into corals. I do need to find like a, either a graphic designer or a, a just an editor, like to find somebody. And yes, I would absolutely pay in coral, especially for a good editor. <laughs> Chris Harkins is like, I wish I lived in Akron. I would edit for coral. Bummer. You get, you have so many corals here in your tank. I mean, if you're good, I'm assuming you're good. Yeah, I'm out, of, I'm out of drinks, and I don't think I'm going to have any more. That's enough. That's at least an inch onto my waistline that I didn't need. Aaron, just get a few interns. I, you know what? I'm planning on getting interns, but I, but I want to make sure that this new building thing is done because I don't think that I could adequately even interview them. Like, I think I'd be so scatterbrained that I would just end up, you know, working with just total goofballs and making the whole situation worse. Or I wouldn't give them enough attention to really, you know, lead them along the right path as to what I what I really want. Because I've had, I used to work at a university, you know, managing their intellectual property and stuff, you know, when I had like an adult job. Uh, and, you know, dealing with interns is like, you do need to like give them enough time. Otherwise, it's just a total waste of everybody's time. You know, they'll, they'll never get to the stage that you need them to get to to be productive. They are not learning anything, so it's, it's just bad all around. So I need to be able to, you know, to give, to have enough time to give them the guide, that type of guidance. And right now, it's not that time. Interns is like herding cats. Having tried to herd cats, I think herding cats might be a little easier than managing interns. I'd rather herd cats than manage interns. <laughs> you know what? I've never seen Life Aquatic. Like, I, I should have seen that movie by now. I like the director. Obviously, I like the underwater stuff. Um, is that Paul Thomas Anderson? Or is that Wes Anderson? Clearly, I like the director so much I don't know the guy's name. But I like I like that aesthetic. I heard it's a very good, well made thing. So yeah, haven't seen it. Matthew Carroll, have you ever thought of putting a picture of the coral with the correlating number? Um I have thought of it. That would raise the price of every single one of these by ten dollars. Because that is a lot more work. The, yeah, the reason why the, the prices are a little bit less is because we do a little bit less as far as preparation to do this many corals. Wes Anderson. Yeah, because I think Paul Thomas Anderson is like there will be blood. I like both of them. <clears throat> yes, but Matthew, I, I agree. That would be that would be helpful. I just think it'd be so much extra work that yeah, that that it would be reflected in the price, unfortunately. Now, if I had an intern that was here, I mean, but what, what's an intern going to do? Just like walk around with the phone and, and snap a photo of this and put it on? Eh, it's going to look like, it's not going to look that good. Like, it, it would be inconsistent with the rest of the site because like our photography tends to be very good. And just to like to, to throw that together, it might just be kind of 
self-sabotaging. Now, one thing we can probably do that could, that's kind of like an in-between would be like after this whole thing is published, we might be able to do like to comment um, like a timestamp for every number. So we would essentially um, we would essentially take this take my list of corals with the prices and just add a timestamp. And so if you wanted to go to that coral, just hit that little link and it would take you to that point in the video. We might be able to do something like that. Christy says nice shirt. Thank you, Christy. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm talking with with Sagi about coming and hanging out next week. I think it's I think it's time. I haven't been up there to visit you guys in a long time. We should have dinner. I'm, I'm totally inviting myself to, to dinner because that's what I do. <clears throat> Matthew Carroll, and what I mean by that is on your website, when I go to buy it, it has the number, but I have to pause the show or stop the show in order to go over to the website on my phone. Yeah, I can kind of see how that, that, that would be an issue, like bouncing back on a phone. I think that like, oftentimes what I would always recommend for people, and this is kind of assuming that you're on a desktop, is to have like the live show playing over here, and then over here have like the website going so you can kind of like do like the, the shopping in one window and then the, just just watching the stream in the other but I could kind of see like if you're purely mobile like the bouncing back and forth could get a little gross I love the live stream once you go back a month or two and see the growth of your frags that's a good point too and then also it's 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 a good thing for us to be able to see just from month to month how corals change. I mean, you can probably go back and find like the same corals that we're selling look really different just because of, um, of what month it's in. I mean, certain months are better for certain corals. That is the beauty of working out in, in, a, in a big greenhouse. Um, in a newer system that's gonna be a lot more controlled inside the new building, you're gonna see less of that but out here, like just going like, I guess through the ages, because we've been doing these shows for like a long time now, like years. So it's interesting to see like how we've made like different leaps in presentation and stuff like that. My phone does split screen. Okay, that's, that might be a helpful feature. Great, and we have the wine, excellent. Okay, nobody cares about this story, but I'm gonna tell it anyway. I went to Thanksgiving dinner at my friend's place. I brought a bottle of wine. It didn't get used at that particular Thanksgiving party. And I've always been meaning to like go back there, have dinner with them, and so we can all enjoy that wine together. It's been years <laughs> since we have not drank that wine. So that, that's, that's what he's talking about there. It is a Margot for all you wine connoisseurs out there that are into left bank Bordeaux. Time stepping the video would be a good idea if you live up the live stream for purchase on the site for a day or two or move them over to what you see is what you get. Yeah, yeah, so the live stream uh, or the live show, the sale itself, goes on into next week. So like, like come like Tuesday, the video is still available, the items are still available for purchase. See, look, all these guys are, are talking about split screening their their stuff on their on their Samsungs and, and whatnot. That's great. Like, when, when it comes right down to it, I'm not phone guy. Like, I'm really bad at phones. <clears throat> I know, for example, that this this uh, Hell's Eye chalice looks dramatically different earlier in the seasons. Um, yeah, it, it's it's a lot lighter, and you're getting like uh, like multi colors on the eyes and stuff. Very weird. It's cool. It's clear. It's growing. It's healthy. It's just the coloration is just completely changed. 
And chalices tend to do that. Like a lot of LPS tends to be very, uh, very cons consistent in their coloration. They don't really shift a lot, but chalices are definitely a, an exception to that rule. Okay, we're at 147. <clears throat> More chalices. And by the way, I did take a peek at the at the live broadcast on a on a separate monitor or a separate browser. It does look pretty good. I have to I have to admit, it looks pretty good. I can't complain. I'm sorry, I'm taking a look at it again. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yep. <laughs> 148. 148, okay. Sorry about that, guys. But part, part of the, the fun of being like a skeleton crew today of just, of just Ben and I here is that, uh, well, I mean, I'm usually doing like the director stuff anyway. So I get like really distracted, like looking at chat, looking at this, looking at that. No more brain function, like running on caffeine and sugar. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago, can you ship outside the US? I cannot, unfortunately. Um, we get that question a lot. But uh, international shipping, it is its own animal. And so we are US only. Having said that, I would really like to be on vacation in Trinidad and Tobago right about now. That sounds like a really, really, really good time. But yeah, the only place that's like not technically, or I guess it is technically the US, it's like a Puerto Rico. It's a US territory that we're, we're able to ship to. But um, no, no other actual different countries. If we order coral day one, when do the corals arrive? Okay, so <clears throat> so what we can do, if you need it to be there on a specific day, just let us know and we'll hold off on shipping. So typically we ship on Monday for delivery Tuesday. Like the vast majority of whatever's purchased today gets shipped out Monday for delivery Tuesday. But there's plenty of people that want to defer shipping. Maybe they're traveling or something like that. And so we'll just work it out with them. <clears throat> we'll ship later in the week. Now, if you wanted Friday for delivery Saturday, there's an upcharge for that just because uh, that's an extra service for FedEx. But it's like it's like fifteen dollars or something, and you can uh, you can purchase that that module, and you can get that on the calendar. Eric, what is the biggest limitation on international shipping? Um, the biggest problem is that the the regulatory vehicle for shipping coral is basically you're shipping endangered species. And it's in, through an international treaty called CITES, um, C-I-T-E-S. And so member countries to this international treaty have different documentation requirements and also uh, import and export quotas for all of these things. Um, it doesn't apply to certain corals. It applies to mainly stony corals. But even in that, um, it, it, it differs country to country, and some countries aren't even uh, able to handle CITES. So you'll ship this thing in there. They don't know what the heck to do with it, and it'll just sit there for 10 weeks in, in customs. Just There's no office to deal with CITES, that sort of thing. That happens. Um, the, it's extremely expensive. So like per box, in, as far as like shipping and... Um, paperwork and fees, it could be hundreds of dollars, two to three hundred dollars per box, something like that. Um, both people would have to have the correct permitting, so I would need to have an export permit, they would need to have an import permit, and the last time I heard, and don't 
take this to the bank. But I am not sure if there is an export quota at all for stony corals leaving the United States. So there may be no legal way to get stony corals out of, of the US. So there's all kinds of, of issues with international shipping. Fish Guy New York, have you posted any Zoas yet? Just started watching. Uh, most of them were like right at the beginning of the show. But there's more coming up. We, we sometimes like to break it up because, you know, people like, you know, they jump in at different times. What we've noticed is generally speaking, people spend chunks of 15 to 20 minutes on the show. So every 15 to 20 minutes, it's going to be new to the next person. Trinidad in the house, welcome. <laughs> it's awesome. You never know who's going to be on the show. Did I miss your top selling pulsing zinnia? No, Sean. You're seeing it right now. Adam's Apple, just curious, how much longer is the live sale? We have about 100 corals left. We're going to go to 255. So quite a few. But we are going to be speeding through this. We got one hour before we all turn into pumpkins. <laughs> yeah, 158. When his polyps come out, they're also green. Wasn't George Costanza an importer exporter? I was he I I, I didn't watch Seinfeld. Are you guys going to Macna? I was very close to going to Macna, but I am not going to Macna. I um, ended up booking a vacation to Vietnam and that ate my travel budget for the year. Excuse me. So what's everybody got going on this weekend? It's like, now that it's no longer looking like it's gonna storm, it looks beautiful out. So hopefully it's nice where you guys are. Are you guys uh, planning on doing anything? Hopefully a water change for your tank mixed in there? Are you in a place where you have to mow your grass? Just like random yard work weekend, or is there anything actually fun going on? Actually, I'm wondering, because usually, because there's a proliferation of just shows, like different types of shows going on, and um, I, I'm wondering if, like, at, at any given time, whenever we do a live show, if there's, like, just other shows going on, like, like you know, like, frag swaps, that sort of thing. By the way, that last Fiji hypercolor looks sweet. Yeah, look nice. I'm filling my 120. It takes a while to make that much water. It sure does. I never really even thought about that. It's gonna take me forever to fill up my tanks. It takes, yeah, I mean, Setting up a tank is, it's a thing. You know, I've never been to Germany. I need to visit. I was going to be drilling two tanks this weekend, but my local fish store screwed up the tank order. Maybe next weekend. That stinks. That's so frustrating because you probably waited a long time for that too. Uh, are you going to the Cleveland Frag Swap in October? 
I probably will not be, but I bet my mother will be going. Because she likes to go to the shows and, and shop for corals. So I'm trying to, um, I am trying to, what do you call it? Speaking of coral trade, because we, we were talking about, you know, about horse trading earlier. I'm trying to get a very large commercial RO system in exchange for coral. It's going to be something in the neighborhood of like 3,000 to 5,000 gallons per day. Whoa, here's the wind again. Devoted to fish for it. She was like, that shirt is fire. <laughs> Thank you. El Chapo shirt, yes. It's like Tidal Gardens, a.k.a. Live Sale King, a.k.a. Dr. No, a.k.a. El Chapo. <laughs> you need to have as many nicknames as possible. 166. 166, all right. That's funny. You know, Eric, like, uh, when it comes to doing the shows, I really don't get out a lot. I'm becoming more and more of like a, a, a crazy cat hermit in my old age. One thing I'm enjoying more about the way that this camera is set up is because we do the 60 frames per second, when Ben slides from one coral to the next, it looks really smooth. Before it would just get, you know, it, it's just because of the way that cameras work, it gets blurry. But at 60 frames per second, it looks like it's just whoosh. I love that. Tattooed dancers wondering about trachees. Do you recommend putting them on top of PVC to elevate them from the sand bed? You know, that's kind of like personal preference, I would say. We've, we've done it before. Um, I don't think it's necessary. Say what? I think the fish would have diggers or sand sifters. Yeah, maybe if you had like like fish that might kick sand up on it, maybe you might consider it. But at the same time, sometimes I, I, I worry about like the PVC okay. itself kind of digging into the flesh of it because you know how the flesh comes back underneath. Also, sometimes like they get knocked off of the PVC ring occasionally. So there's some, there's some, some issues there. We've done it before to keep it off of a glass bottom. Is it really necessary? Eh, no, not really. Um, there's good and bad to it, I guess. They do take on a different shape, though. If you put them on a on a PVC ring, it'll be a little bit more, a little bit more bulbous, which sometimes people like that look. We have one customer that uh, he's like, I want my coral to look like it does in your in your store. So can I also buy like the little the PVC ring it came on? So I'm like, sure. I'll throw that in for you. Eric D, introverts for the win. So you know, it's like, it's not that I'm, I'm shy to be around people, but you know how they, they say about the difference between introverts and extroverts is like how people like get energy from one another. It's like people that are extroverts like to go out because they, they get more energy being around other people in social situations, whereas like introverts, it's like, you, they have to be alone to get their battery up, and then when they go out, it's what depletes the battery. I'm kind of in that second camp. Like, I need alone time with cats and YouTube <laughs> to replenish my battery.
Thanks. I'm wondering because when I vacuum the sand, they roll around. Yeah, I don't know if uh, if PVC would help that. They might. They might. Yeah, depends on how aggressive you're being with that. Oh wait, hold on. What number is this? Sorry, one seventy-three. I got carried away there. Yeah, that's a Pachycerus. That's not a Zoa. So my bad on that. One seventy-four. Okay. Yeah, the black T-shirt blocking that definitely helps. No, so I reef. Sorry about that. That's my, that's my bad. It is not a one seventy-two is not a Zoe. That's a Pachycerus. That was number one seventy-three. Actually, I just didn't change the overlay. See, I need an intern that just changes the overlay for me while I'm actually hosting the show, because like. Having to do both, occasionally I'll like I'll like miss an overlay timing. And I guess that that's the perk of, of a live show. You you can you can double check. I have had people get confused before when I did make that screw up. So it happens. It happens. So these hammers that you're seeing, I believe, are all Australian. And I'm wondering if, yeah, you know, we do have a few Indonesian ones, but I, I think we're still growing them all out. Yeah, it might take a little bit of time. So for those of you that are new to how this operates, uh, welcome, first of all, to the live show. Uh, you can check it out. The main page is actually at titlegardens.com slash live. You'll see like this video here embedded into that page, but you'll also see all of the different corals that we're selling there. It's a numbered list. So if you're interested in number 170, whatever, you can just find that item, toss it into your shopping cart, and check out like it's a regular item. And you can mix and match. So if you see... Um, if you see a coral that's just on the, on the regular site and you just want to add that to live show items, you can do that. Shipping is a flat rate $39.99. It's free after $250. But just so you know, in order to actually get the coral on, on any of the live sale lists or whatever, just having it in your shopping cart, it's not good enough. You have to fully check out to secure that item. So what we always recommend is for you to check out each time and when it comes to the to the shipping method select like live sale slash adding to an order just so you avoid that $39.99 shipping charge each time you place the order invariably somebody will pay for shipping more than once it's not a big worry we will refund you the extra instances of shipping it's not a big deal at all or if you did pay for shipping once, but eventually later in the show purchased enough corals that you go over the free shipping threshold, again, we will refund that shipping. So hopefully that clears up on how the, the whole live sale thing works. And it is US only. I have to also point that out. We cannot ship to another country. How can you tell uh, hammer is hybrid, the wash color? It's more like a, the tips have a swirl of purple and green. Muhammad Tahir, hello. Any advice for coloring up and keeping zoas? Coloring up, that's an interesting question. Usually they don't discolor a whole lot. Um, if anything, I would try to keep things fairly consistent for them, give them plenty of flow, 
decent amount of light and you can try to feed them. They're not the easiest things to feed, but uh, they can certainly benefit from it if, if you're actually able to get it done. One eight one. Okay. What is the best way to keep SPS coral without a calcium reactor? Uh, the best thing is whatever you're actually able to keep up with. So if your thing is doing frequent water changes, that'll work. If your thing is always using calc water and top off, that could work. Doing dosing two part, all sorts of things could work. You just have to kind of find out really realistically what works for your for your regimen. Uh, if you end up with a tank jam packed full of SPS one day, one of those things might not be enough. So one of um, one of my friends, he's no longer in the hobby now, but he has an, a spectac he had a spectacular SPS tank, and he would do all of it. He had a calcium reactor. All of his top off was Kalkwasser. And he had two-part dosing, like he had absolutely everything in order to keep up with the uh, the, the calcium alkaline.